sampling in Etruscan, added as a drug not yet synthesized, black marketeers of World War III, excisers of telepathic sensitivity, osteopaths of spirit, investigators of infractions denounced by land paranoid chess players. Can you dig it? Yeah, man. Hell, hell. The gang's all here. What a wonderful turnout for a very special episode. Uh, I'm Sam Tripoli, and these are all my friends. And uh, everybody, when you, you know, we got some new people to Union Unwanted. We got some people who've been here a couple times. So it's my favorite show. Uh, I wanted to do a, a spiritual podcast. I have a podcast called Zero that's available on Rockfin. And it uh, changed my life because as we learn all this kind of craziness going on in the world, the question is, what do we do with that information? And how do we allow that information to affect us? And, you know, we've all heard the experiments about energy and positive energy and negative energy and its effects on water. So I'm very, I, I'm, I'm like, man, we got to be able to deal with the information we got. And Zero, my spiritual podcast, is the only way I've kept my sanity. And I've actually been able to completely pull out of the system and just observe. No longer sitting there and uh, trying to change the world, but kind of just observe and take a step back. So everybody you see here is, uh, has been on, you know, all the guys who run uh, the union, they wanted all of our podcasts, and they're all wonderful people. And I'm so thankful. And we got, we got a big show here today. And trust me, everybody will be able to share and jump in. And I just... I don't know where to start. I can just tell you, man, I'm a knuckle dragger, dude. I'm a knuckle dragger my whole life. I've been a knuckle dragger, sex, drugs, rock and roll, just, you know, bad energy, man, bad energy. And not like making a connection to source, God, whatever you want to call the creator, you know, and now that I have that connection, my life is so much, is just so much, the vibration is so much better in my personal life. And then I'll, I'll start I'll bring in anybody who wants to jump in, but in my personal life, every day I practice law of attraction, law of abundance, love thy neighbor. And I do it with discipline. And when I, and all those are just different steps to love and love. And how do you spread love? And how do you, I've been asked, how do you love your neighbor, man? It's just simply, I don't judge, you know, everybody gets you know every i love all groups and everybody and uh you get judged on an individual basis i don't i don't think all group all one group is bad and all this i i, I just spread love and that's kind of what's helped me to raise my vibration so enough of me talking i don't know if there's anybody who would like to jump in i know there's a lot of people anybody who wants to say well anything, i was gonna say too. something when you were calling yourself a knuckle dragger i was like oh i resonate with that really hard and i think a lot of us on here are um knuckle draggers and i'm probably gonna get that tattooed on my knuckles now but <laughs> i i i was doing a walk today and i was going into nature and the quote um the brightest lights cast the darkest shadows popped into my mind so it's funny that you started the show like this because i feel like any one of us who are going down this road first had to be confronted with something really dark about ourselves or in the world that propelled us into this place. And that's why we're trying to help other people. And um, so I feel like you're, you're speaking to the choir here. Well, I love it. Ricky, if you want to take over, you can start well, calling on people. Yeah. Well, I just wanted, uh, first I wanted to say the union that wanted.com. That's where you can get all our links, find all our channels, merch, all that stuff. This show is live streamed every other Monday on Rockfin, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then the audio is eventually released everywhere. So I know people listen to the show. They want to know where they can find the videos. That's where you can find the videos. Obviously, we're, we're like many of us, we're, we're trying to avoid YouTube and, and we're um, using the alternatives. So the other thing I just wanted to hit on is I think this topic is really important. You guys are all going to bring such interesting perspectives to it, but it's really important almost more now than ever, because I think during a time when the world seems so chaotic and all the anxiety and the negative energy in the world can really bring us down, finding some type of Zen and happy place and looking into maybe spiritual topics to, to find that happy place and, and learn how to deal with all this chaos can be very beneficial. So 
I think this topic is going to be awesome. And um, and this reminds me of like the old school Union the Unwanted shows. And we had like 80 people on. And like Sam said, I don't know how it always ended up working. You know, we didn't have to uh, really do much. But um, does anybody want to get into maybe a personal story on how they got into spirituality or any topic that's kind of connected or linked to that? Good. John, yeah. do you want to jump in? Because we, we had a great conversation today. And you've kind of gotten to a very uh, interesting place spiritually over the last couple months. And, you know, what you were saying today to me really resonated with me. If you want to kick it off, you know, get the dance party going, get everybody off the, the walls into the middle of the dance. Oh, party. boy. All right. Well, first of all, I'm honored to be on. Sam, thank you for inviting me here today. And uh, I've been on some of the other shows and I'm new to most everybody on here. But, um, you know... Sam and I have known each other since 2018 through a mutual friend, and I've shared a lot of, in pieces, some background about uh, my childhood and where, where I kind of came into all this with human trafficking of children being a reflection of the internal abuse and that mirroring a lot of new things for me. And it was in 2019 that I had a spiritual awakening throughout my whole body. And... Um, the, the, the thing that I have come to understand is that in order to create a new world, you have to deconstruct the old one, the old program that's inside of you, because it's, it's in a sick relationship with the outside world. And that's the program that we've all grown up in across our own dimensions and time and the dynamics of which are very different. But this, for which you should not, I guess, underestimate, is the understanding of the emotional reality of your body in relation to not just the outside world as it triggers you, but the deeper part of you that begins to relax into the knowing that you are disassociating yourself from that traumatic world. And it's pulling at you because it has... You have all the history with it. You know it quite well. Uh, you can, in fact, go over and over and over through it again and again until finally you have only to feel through that for which is love. And I had an experience three nights ago where I literally went back to the emotional reality of that time where I thought I was going to die as a child. Um, and the fear came into my mind, it went into my heart, it was paranoia of a level that I can tell you why people have psychotic breaks, because it's so intense emotionally and mentally that you, you think you're going to die. There isn't a way out, it's just all the water is rushing in and you're gonna drown. And I called in my angels and within seconds, that pain left my mind it left my heart it literally physically went back down into my legs where i was shaking uncontrollably for 20 minutes and i was able to view it as not my own not my own pain this is why there is so much hatred in the world and why people are desperate for love is because the self-hatred is the rejection of the falsehood that was placed upon all of us through our parents unconsciously and people who have committed unconscious acts against us, and also the unconscious acts that we have co-created with other people. That's where the responsibility comes in. And, and the awareness that comes forward, the enlightenment, is seeing the truth in all of us the same. That trauma does affect you in this expression when distributed that way to you. And across this broad spectrum of reality, it also hits this other person expressed in a totally different way. But what that is a reflection of and a symptom of is our disassociation in this program and the awakening that's coming up. It's like an eruption of a high level emotions and stress. And the truth of the matter is, and I'm Sam, this may not be exactly what we said, but all I wish to conclude with is that the, the, the letting go of it is once you feel it and release it, it has no power over you anymore. That's really, at the end of the day, it, it allowed love to come in 
not just in the moment of fear, but going forward to now integrate that part into my collective being rather than to reject it like I, I was before. And then the body forced me to face it. That's essentially what it comes down to. Thank you, John. Yeah. Lindsay, do you want to go? Yeah, I would love to. I, um, I really relate, you know, with Sam, I also had a really dark past and history and did way too many drugs and all kinds of things. But even throughout that, you know, and this is what I think a lot of people can relate to is that even in your darkest moments, there's some part of you that knows the truth and that that's not really you and that this doesn't really fit and that something is like broken, you know, when you're doing that and the path to healing that, um, like John was just talking about of letting that love in and really how deep that can go and how confronting it can be and how much trauma comes up and all of that is so powerful. And, you know, I think if anyone out there is listening, a lot of people tell themselves, oh, I'm not spiritual. Like, I'm just like a normal person or something, or like, I can't do those things, or I can't meditate or these like messages a lot of us have. And I think we've been sort of trained to disconnect from that side of ourselves, uh, probably intentionally so. Uh, but I'll, I'm here to tell you 100% of people are spiritual, whether they know it or not. <laughs> and I love there's some stand up comedian that's like, you know, these atheists are like walking around and they're telling us they don't believe it. They know, like they fucking know. They're just pretending like they're scared or something. And maybe it's that, you know, but there is, I think all humans have this connection. And whether you feel like you're good at it or not or whatever, like you, you have it. And if you just sit with it and pursue it and invite it in, uh, especially that loving feeling, that connection. I think it's really powerful. And I just wanted to share a story that's totally uh, disconnected from that because my own path has brought me more and more and more into a spiritual way of living and into spiritual leadership sort of roles. And uh, I do an event called One Day of Brightness. And we do this every solstice and equinox. And Catherine was there yesterday. Buffalo and Legs were there yesterday. I think that's all out of this group that was there yesterday. But we had a good group of people. And what I wanted to share about it is that you know, when we come together in a group like this, um, it's like Jesus said, right? Wherever one or more gathered in my name, like there I am. Well, we, there was more than one or more of us. And we were gathered in the pursuit of deepening our spiritual connection and bringing in this love and this, you know, power into ourselves and therefore the world. And we are in these deep meditations together and doing all of this stuff. And we felt it like people will cry and like, <laughs> like, you know, there's a lot of release happens and people go really deep. Well, when we left this, this is not scientific at all, by the way, this is like the least scientific thing I'm going to say. And so all the skeptics out there, I know are just going to be like, fuck this lady. But anyway, <laughs> I like this uh, synchronicity, at least that when we left there, somebody pointed out the Schumann resonance graph yesterday was like off the charts, amazingly increased in this like huge blast of resonance that if you look over the entire past like month, you know, there's like little spikes here and there in it. Yesterday, specifically, like while we were all joined together doing this event and deepening our connection to each other and to, you know, love in general, just this massive explosion of energy happened. And I find that pretty interesting to say the least. But even if you thought that was pure coincidence, I just you can't deny the, uh, you know, power and experience that each person there felt in their own life. So even if it's purely subjective, and even if we just uplifted ourselves and had this, you know, incredible experience, that's going to carry us through, especially this crazy ass time we're all dealing with right now, even that is worth it. But it is fun to think of the way that resonance can affect and lead out from ourselves and ripple in through the world and maybe even affect things like the Schumann resonance. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I just wanted to share that. Yeah, I think another benefit of spirituality is that it helps us or it opens us to the idea that there's more than the surface level of things that we you know, observe, that there's could be more to the world. And it opens our, I think there's a, a reason why you see, uh, not to make the show about flat earth, but I think people who are open to that idea or open to just completely different um, reality or perception of reality are usually spiritual, you know, or they've done psychedelics or, you know, so I think that's another benefit of being spiritual is it does help you kind of like open to these ideas, these other, you know, what seems outside the box ideas and opens your mind to other possibilities. Uh, Mar Marty, who anybody else jump in line yet? Uh, Marty, you want to jump in on this? Uh, do you think spirituality had something to do with uh, the way you look at the world? Yes, yes, very much. 
Um, the, I didn't even get into conspiracy theory, really. I was, I got into, I was, I was pursuing God and that just sort of landed me in like truth communities and spirit, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, I don't know. I'm just like Sam and just like Lindsay, you know, it was the dark road, but it's, I mean, that's part of the path of, um, any true awakening. It's like, it's called catabasis, like a journey into the underworld. And it's basically this idea is that you have to go through hell and back in order to really find out in, in one sense who you are, you know, you have to really go through some dark times and that, and that when you go through those dark times, you realize you got to crawl out of them. You got to climb the rungs of the ladder up and that takes seeking the spark within. And you find that you realize, well, then you start asking questions like, what is that spark within? Where the hell did that come from? You know what I mean? What is the thing that will that illuminates and enlivens and, and animates me. You know, what is that thing? Some people call it the, you know, Christos within, they call it the divine spark or whatever, but then you see that and it's like, okay, well, you know, you start climbing, you start climbing up and you realize, well, it's a kiss, you know, it's not all darkness. Right. And you start asking those questions about why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Where am I going? Where did I come from? I don't know. Um, for me, crawling out of that shithole, I started finding lots of answers and the answers always pointed to something that was transcendent. And then it was like, okay, well, you know, it's this thing, especially becoming like a Gnostic Christian. It's like, you recognize it's like God is love. You're supposed to love your enemy. Right. And then it's like, well, why <laughs> he's such a dick, <laughs> you know, but you have to. And then I asked the question like, why? Well, because that divine spark that's in you, that's in me, that's in everybody is in that person too. They might not know it, they might be burying it with a, you know, a heap load of hell themselves, but that divine spark is within them and God made them. And so that, that makes the whole thing like love thy neighbor as you love thyself, love thy enemy. It makes sense. Cause then you go and you say, wow, I hate that guy. Cause he's, you know, he's destroying this world and he's destroyed my family and destroyed my life, whatever this is, blah, 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 blah. But if I hate that, then what am I doing? Well, I'm hating the creator. The creator put himself in the center of every, every single person. And every single person is here to undergo that journey of finding it and lifting it up and raising it, you know? And um, so that's been my journey. And that's really, really difficult right now where we're at. You know, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to love because you see so much hatred in the world, you know, but that's the test. You know, earth in itself is a rites of passage for you to undergo that journey to find the spark of God within. And when you find that there's not, there's, for me, it's been nothing else, you know? So. Well, I think negative energy and positive energy, that's something that we really can all kind of agree on. I mean, there is energy. I mean, another reason, even if, if, if it's not a religious reason to love thy neighbor, Another reason is just because when you do have conflict in your life, that friction weighs on you. You don't feel good. You don't, even if, it, if it's not your fault, you know, if, if you and somebody else, you're not getting along, it doesn't feel good. And then when things are squashed and you guys resolve things, you immediately feel better, regardless who was right, who was wrong. None of, you know, so that's a, an, another thing. Bob, I know you wanted to share something. You want to jump in, bud? Yeah, I do. Thanks. Um, and thanks for inviting me, Sam. That uh, was very generous. And uh, I, I think I might have talked to Sam about this uh, when I did his podcast. I have a memory that goes back to my birth, and I will tell you this memory. I it was, uh, and I don't. I obviously I can't uh, quantify it. It's it's a, it's just a it's just a memory and a feeling. But I was I I was uh, transported from with high energy from one place to another. My first thought was, uh, or my first feeling was tremendous fear. And then I had this internal laugh and the thought of, oh, yeah, this again. And I remembered that for a long, you know, I've remembered that my whole life. I never told anybody till I was older. Um, I just didn't think it would be okay to say that to anybody. Uh, and segue to about nine or 10 years old, because I think, you know, you know, wh wherever we come from, whatever that source is that we come from is there. It's just there. And when I was about nine or 10, I was laying down on the grass and I was looking up the clouds. And I remember 
uh, kind of not necessarily leaving my body, but going up into the clouds, into the sky and being part of that thing that was up there and being sort of overwhelmed with this thought that uh, I was tapping into something that other people didn't see because nobody ever talked about it, you know, and it's, it scared me. And I went, I got to keep this a secret. So uh, for me, you know, to, to grow up in a, in a, mainly a society that's more religious than spiritual, which, you know, religion can fuck up spirituality almost better than anything. The, um, <laughs> the, that feeling of there's something else and the, and there was fear that I couldn't talk about it. Um, and then of course, later on, when I got into uh, psychedelics, then everybody was talking about it, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can get shortcut it that way, which obviously didn't work. It was a two headed beast and the ugly head kicked my ass. So now I'm coming back around to it the last two or three decades uh, in, in, of uh, spirituality and a connection with something else of the educational variety. That's all I wanted to throw in, uh, just going back to, to childhood and, you know, wh what am I? Where did I come from? What is this thing? Okay, next. <laughs> Amy, uh, real quick, I want to say something. Uh, Amy Bell is here, and Amy um, had a, uh, came on zero and had a really profound effect on um, my life in terms of how I see the world. And she had a really great share about her, uh, her thing and, you know, the Akashic records and stuff like that. Amy, would you like to jump in real quick? And, you know, you said some funny when Bob uh, was sharing, I'd love for you to share it with everybody. Yeah. Hey, can you guys hear me? All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so, so honored to be amongst all of you. Truly, truly. And I said, um, that Bob, I used to be a midwife and I would greet all the babies born into my presence with welcome back. I would say it at the warmer, like when nobody was looking because they would think I was crazy. Um, and occasionally once or twice, I met a couple babies that I was like, mm, it's your first time here. Welcome. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm, I'm so excited to be here and I don't know how long I'll get to talk because I have an 11 week old baby, my baby sleeping in my arms here right now. But I just wanted to say um, that I guess similar to um, Marty, I, I came to conspiracies through spirituality. Um, last year was a huge awakening for me, but not I don't know. I always kind of knew that like shit was rotten around here, but I didn't quite, I wasn't like fully letting myself feel the depths of it and the darkness truly. Um, but I've been spiritual my whole life and it set me up to really, really navigate my own dark times with, I guess I'll just, I'll say grace. Uh, but it's, it, I, I lost my son, my second born son, when he was 20 days old and spirituality is totally what um, has allowed me to come through and feel not only like a whole person and like, I haven't been through a tragedy. I've just been through a life experience, but also like, I'm not in any way diminished by it, nor is my son, his consciousness, but I am enhanced by it. And it showed me that there's nothing to fear in this life. There's nothing to fear. There are so many intense experiences, but all it ever leads you to, if you allow it, is to more of yourself. There's only ever more of ourselves to uncover, only ever more. Like we are an infinite, limitless mystery. And it's the most beautiful journey ever to be on, to uncover layers and layers layers of ourselves and to be constantly surprised every day by ourselves if we choose to allow it and if we don't choose to allow it that's fucking fine too because like it's it's not a linear trajectory it's um it's messy and it's all over the map and it's it's beautiful and it's hideous and it's everything but um i feel like i i really really second what uh Miriam said about how this is such a massive awakening because like <laughs> collectively the entire globe is having to confront our fear of death. And um, I am just confident that there's 
only goodness to be found on the other side, but it's going to feel like a fucking squeeze <laughs> until, until we get to that other side, like a serious squeeze. That's great. Anybody else want to jump in? Miriam? Hi, everyone. I'm in Miami. I'm so happy to be in Miami and have escaped California. Epigenetics is real. The environment that you are in makes a difference. What you consume. So, for instance, I don't choose to watch horror or war movies. I just want to jump on what Amy said as far as uh, death. That was the first story that I covered, and then I ended up being hit by an SUV, and I've shared before my near-death experience. But I, I like to tell people, spoiler alert, we all die, so live life. And I really feel in my heart that if there was uh, more of an um, inquiry into mortality and into how vast the spirit is, that... This is unfortunately how our human species learns through um, needless tragedy, and we're witnessing that. And, you know, I, I'm returning back to my spiritual roots. I've been on a path since age 13, and I've been consuming a lot of negativity, and I choose to do that because I, I'm trying to understand. But those two have coincided. Uh, co collided and we're facing this spiritual battle and unfortunately lots of people are dying now needlessly if anyone's paying attention but it's part of the bigger picture i just feel what if i move aside and i just channel uh it, it's time to focus on light i was told not to cast pearls to swine any longer and uh, i really think we need to put down our air mask so we can be of service and be happy. And there's so much beauty in life. Um, so I just want to share that. And I pulled a card. This is a beautiful deck. I just say I'm one part woo, but I pulled the hunter. I don't know what that means yet. I, I was looking it up, but if anyone's interested and I'm just honored to be in this field and, and I feel we need to cast our, our light and we know what's going on. So thank you. Anybody else who want anybody else want to jump in? I'll jump in and, and comment on what Miriam said about being in a certain place and how your environment affects you. I think, you know, health and wellness is key. Everybody here, I hope, is familiar with that, you know, laying the groundwork to get in touch with your spiritual self, your higher self. I wanted to read a quote from Marty Leeds' book. It's a book that I've had for a long time. I really appreciate it. And uh, he says from Alan Watts, the universe is the game of the self, which plays hide and seek forever and ever. So I think once you wake up to your spiritual nature on a personal level, you begin to unfold something that becomes like a story and your story is personal to you. But as we see here with all these people coming together, our own individual stories collectively create this larger story that we call our reality, right? So I think we, we shouldn't underestimate our ability to have a, an effect on other people's lives, especially in the position that we are having shows and hosting and being able to inspire people. I think landscape is key and it doesn't mean moving. It doesn't mean like leaving where you're from. It just means understanding where you're from. You're, you're the land that you know your ancestors are connected through. It doesn't have to be the people you're related to, but the physical land where you're born, you're connected to those ancestors as well. So understanding your spiritual self and how that connects to the land around you is key in this time, especially. I, I totally 100% agree, man. And for me, it's just when you start to start to see that, you know, we get lost in trying to save everybody and change the world. You know, the biggest thing I learned is that I can't, I, I, I that's not my job. I want to change the world. Like I got to change myself and I work within and I change the, the people around me. And that's how I change the world. And when I realize that, like, I am one of the universe and each, you know, I see how many boxes here, like 28 boxes, but it's really just one universe right here. And I, you know, like, 
10 years ago, if I would have said that, I would have smacked myself. And I'd be like, you're stupid. Shut up. Do blow. Get weird. That's why I would have been. But that's not who I am anymore, man. Who I am is like, I find the love in everybody to the best of my ability. My baby's mama might not agree with that. But trust me, I am trying my hardest to show the love to everybody that I can. Okay? And it is hard, man. But that's this realm. Wherever we live in, man, the plane is going to have some turbulence. And you got to understand that. And each one of these things that we are thrown our way is a lesson that the universe is getting us ready for something bigger coming. And when you start to realize that and you stop looking at these things as moments of you falling and getting kicked down and you're getting treated like shit and the universe is shitting on your chest, right? And you stop looking at it like that and you really start looking at it like, what is to be learned here? What am I doing? What is my role in this? When you start doing that stuff, man, it changes your outlook. There is no reality. There is perception. And how you perceive things becomes your reality. And when you perceive the tough times as lessons to be learned, things start to change. I wish a million failures on everybody, a million of them, before that one thing that's going to change your life happens. Because then you learn what you did wrong. You don't do it that time. And the universe changes. I've changed my life, man. And I like, dude, it's still rocky here and there, but ma'am, I'm in such a more beautiful place than I've ever been before. And it's all because of spirituality and just really looking into it, not getting lost in the different, not looking for differences, but really looking for similarities in all of us. And that's really helped me. Anybody else want to jump can in? I, can I just say really quick, Sam, that part of that is because you're so radically honest about yourself. And that is the key, I think, to anybody no matter where they are at on their spiritual path, especially if they're saying to themselves they're not spiritual or if they're like, oh, I've had 12,000 Kundalini awakenings, being just radically honest about where you're at is all it really takes. Thank you. Being genuine and vulnerable, I just wanted to add. It's huge. One thing uh, that I've been thinking about lately is just how like the, the times we're in are affecting all of this stuff. Like... All of us might have been on a conspiracy path before 2020, and then the rules changed for how we are like conspiracy theorists. And we might have been on a spiritual path before 2020, and now everything is changing how we're spiritual. And I think not to be a downer, but like I'm a little concerned about like spiritual bypassing, like if people are just sort of um, love and lighting reality away from them like if you're sitting in australia like in a freaking quarantine camp and you're just like love this is all gonna go away soon like i don't think that's really helpful so i think um i don't know being like honest and realistic with this world we're in and maybe kind of firing yourself up and being more of a warrior than just a hippie pacifist might be necessary for some people. I'm not saying anybody here because everybody here in one way or the other is like doing great work, but I'm just saying the average person. I take Croft my God, dude. Yeah. Like the average person might be learning these spiritual things and just sliding out of reality when reality is getting turned up constantly. So that's just my thought. I think that's a, a really good point because I get what you're saying. Like we can focus so much on trying to be Zen and be in a happy place, but and then we don't do anything to to prevent or stop the chaos around us. But and then this kind of goes back to what Sam said, which I think is super important, is that before you can help anybody else, you do need to find some happiness inside first, right? Like you need to repair yourself before you can repair anything else. And so I think there is benefits. I mean, we were both or you and Sam are kind of both saying the same thing. It's like, yeah, fix yourself first. Then when you're in a good place and you do find happiness and peace, then that's when you can go out and, and try to, I guess, spread that. Right. So um, I don't know what the saying is, but it's like faith without works is blah, blah. I don't know how that ends there, but uh, for me, it's like I, it, everything's action. You know, you, you know, you got to take action in life. Now I also know I've heard a lot of people talking about, Kami, California. And I totally understand that. But I'm also telling you, it's like also like I'm living life. So when we look at what's going on in Australia, right, I could sit there and lose my skull over what's going on in Australia. I could be sitting there every day tweeting and go, oh, my God, what's going on? Or I could work on myself getting, you know, 
Krav Maga, shooting guns, building, growing stuff. All that stuff is like working on myself. Do I understand what's going on? Of course. I have friends of mine that went to January 6th and they lost everything. And I'm like, that's great, man. I knew something was going to go down. So for me, man, I go, hey, dude. Action will come when action needs to come for me, but nothing good comes out of me not working on myself. And that's really what I'm about. If I get lost in every fucking tragedy that goes on, that steals my louche, and I have nothing left for myself, I have to make myself a better person. So when the shit hits the fan, I can handle what is going on in the world. If I mean, so much of what's going on in our society is people were, you know, People searching out like like tragedy and, and there will be, you know, the, the, searching out other people's problems and bringing it into their own life. And that for me is like, I can't work in that, man. I have to work on myself. And then when the shit hits the fans and the and the fucking bootlickers come, then I'm ready for action. You know, there's going to be some fucking sorrow in this reality. That's just the way it is. There's going to be a lot of that. And how you deal with it is how you go on. But I totally understand what you're saying about the sit around like everything's great. Like I, I live in Hollywood, man. I watch some of my comedic friends. They're, they're putting out content like they're the band on the Titanic. Like they're just keep playing while the fucking ship is sinking. I totally get that. But at the same time, if I just put all my energy into that, I get lost. Hey, Sam, can I jump in for a second? You cannot. Yes, of course, brother. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I really like where this thing is going when Dan kind of turned the heat, you know, and and, uh, and and that's where I wanted to go to at the risk of pissing a lot of people off with all the love and, and joy and spirituality shit, which I think we need to risk pissing each other off at this point and being real and... I think that part of the realness that I've always appreciated about what you bring is what you were bringing right there, which I think a lot of people see as a contradiction to what you're saying at the beginning, but I think it's a contradiction that has to be resolved. You know, w when I first talked to you, one of the things I thought was really cool, I said, hey, I came at this thing from science and looking for spirituality, and I found conspiracy. And you said, shit, I came at this thing from conspiracy, and I found spirituality. And I think there's there's something there, and this is what I think uh, Dan was referring to, too. There's something that the conspiracy community brings to this thing that should not be lost. It's the edge. It's the truth seeker. Fuck the flat earth. Flat earth is bullshit, in my opinion. You can feel otherwise, but we should hammer that out. We should figure out what the fuck that means to you and to me. And it's it's like when you get into science, my thing is conspiracy number one is science trying to convince you that you are meaningless, that you live in a meaningless universe, that any meaning you find in your life is, is an illusion cre created by your brain. That's conspiracy number one, in my opinion. And if we can't fight about that, then how is anyone going to be able to figure this out? Hey, you know, Bob, I think mentioned that uh, he didn't say it this way that I'd say it is religions are, are all cults ish or leaning on cultish principles including and especially christianity hey that's my opinion you feel differently great but that's something that seems to be at the core of something we need to hash out as kind of a community of people who are looking for truth not just looking to pump each other up and you know get through the day or any of that shit. i i, I just like the edge that i feel from the conspiracy community and i love that you're you're trying to meld those two together i i actually one thing i've i've found a lot in the last 18 months during the coronavirus thing was that a lot of people that were on the same page as me were people who were religious and and to the like it seemed like it there was a the average person who wasn't spiritual or religious they were naive to the fact that evil could exist, right? Like they were having a hard time understanding that Dr. Fauci or somebody else could actually want to do harm to people like that. Somebody was capable of, of, of actually 
purposely harming somebody, I, even though historically we've done it over and over again. I mean, you look at every unjust war we've ever been involved in, but they struggle with that idea. And it almost seemed like people who were religious and, and I'm, a, you know, I'm a political atheist. I might be a spiritual atheist. I don't know what I am. I, I'm always soul searching and trying to figure things out, but I don't plant my flag anywhere. But I, I really appreciated the fact that people who were religious, they seem to be the ones who are pushing back because they seem to really understand or, or spiritual. I I don't want to just kind of say exclusively religious, but people who were spiritual or religious or both. And I guess that's another topic we can kind of get into. Do you need to be both? Are you, when you're one, are you the other one? Are you not, you know, like how does that link up and, and everybody's opinion on that. Um, But so I think there's a lot of benefit in that because a lot of uh, those Christian values and stuff like that, that made them, want to push back and made them kind of understand that there are evil people out there and that people like that exist. And, and I feel like people who weren't religious and or <laughs> spiritual struggled to kind of grasp that. Did you, do you guys agree with me or anybody want to push back? Cause I, again, this is a place to yeah. hear ideas, but also a place to challenge ideas. Cause we're all, everybody's respectful. So don't be afraid to push back. Nobody's going to take it. Personally. Fight, fight, fight. Well, what this reminds me of is the story and disclaimer, I'm a total yoga nerd, so I'm going to relate everything to yoga. <laughs> so this just um, reminds me of the Bhagavad Gita and the story of Arjuna and Krishna and the holy battle of uh, the um, families that he's a part of, right? So I see it the same in our whole situation that we're in now is that we're having a battle between people that are on one side and the other. And we know some people on one end and we know the other on the other, right? So say with the whole like vaccination thing and whole COVID thing is that where we are and where we're placed and what our life is, we have to surrender into that. And that's how the divinity floods in, right? So when we are, um, refuting that or we're trying to distance ourselves from that what krishna says to arjuna is that no you have to fight the battle you can't just put away your bow and arrow and just be docile because your greatest purpose is being the warrior right so he is born into the warrior and so he has to fulfill that he wasn't born a brahmin he wasn't born anything else so you have to really examine what it is that your life is entailing and you have to go fully into it and you have to fulfill that karma and so when it's fulfilled you're going to see that there's going to be an abundance that flows through that allows you to go into the next stage of your life so this is what i think is the like the spiritual initiation process where if you aren't allowing yourself to fulfill your karma, you're never, you're never going to get to the next level. Right. So this is what's being called upon us. Even in this whole situation, some people are called to get vaccinated and they have to do it. That's their karma. Some people are called to not get vaccinated and that's their karma and they have to go through it. And the way that we can actually bridge the divide is actually recognizing the importance of all of the game, every piece on the board that it's not good or bad. And then we can actually stream in our divinity more and more easily by having the compassion and love for each person so that We don't pit ourselves against these family members of ours, right? But then we also fight the battle that we need to fight. And we say, it's nothing personal, right? So like the grand scheme of the story of Arjuna and Krishna is that people are going to die and they're going to come back. And that's the view that Krishna has because he's an all-seeing and almighty being. He says, this has been ongoing even before you were born and there's nothing that you can do about it. So surrender into me and be that which is i am the all great and powerful right and that can be complicated because we're coming from a place of mortality and we're coming from a place of physical limitation within our own consciousness and so we want to create divides to make sense of everything but the things like psychedelics and spiritual practices and yoga and meditation allows us to piece by piece get into that bigger picture so we can take a step back and see how it is that we can come from a total compassionate, loving place each day as we are in this mortal realm and in this kind of like mundane world as we're living. Dude, you are awesome. That was badass. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and and totally. And what's nice about spiritual as a concept is it's very um, inward. It's very you. It's all very personal to you. There are many different ways that you can go about this. And just like you said, man, I completely agree that 
we have a good context for this and that we have video games now. So you have a video game, you have a mission that you go on. Okay, well, in this mission, you get to wear these clothes, you get to drive this car, you get to experience this thing. But you get to change that every time the game's over or anytime you want. So you're really just, in my view, one of my favorite ideas about what the hell's going on here is that we're all God, the same damn thing. There's nothing else here other than us. Part of us is fantastic, like everyone here. Uh, part of us is kind of a piece of shit, but we all experience and we all learn as one entity, as different pieces of itself. I mean, it's like one of the purest but cleanest ways to look at it because everything you hate about this place is part of you as well. And you're just here to learn everything you can before you go or before you move on to experience the next thing. So as a collective, this understanding is what's necessary for the whole thing to change as a collective. But, you know, and... On my show, uh, Pat Mahan of the Like Attracts Like podcast, who we should totally have on one of these things, he's great. He said um, that both the villain and the hero bow at the end of the play, right? So both parts are necessary to experience the whole. Sometimes you choose to be the piece of shit part that teaches you those things. Sometimes you're what we're doing here and figuring it out to a different capacity. But all of it is dualistic in nature in this place, whatever the hell this place is, flat, round, whatever, it doesn't matter really. Um, but it it does teach you that there are options here and there are balances and it's just juxtaposition to what you want to experience and what you vibrate at. Uh, the vibration thing is a very important part of it. And Sam, you nailed it with that part, man. Um, the vibration unlocks the key to everything. That's how you transcend. That's how you don't live in fear of having to be that warrior anymore because you don't attract that like or those situations into your life at all. You just kind of coast through it. You know, I've been pretty damn lucky as far as that goes whenever my vibration raised because now it's like, oh, okay, well, I just don't attract that kind of crap anymore. People fell off it. They were people I needed to get rid of anyway. I started making better choices for myself, but they were easy. They weren't hard. They were just something that I wanted to do and look forward to doing. That's what the vibrational part of this is all about. And then you unlock things like UFOs. I mean, I just had uh, Kathleen Martin on my show and she was talking about the vibration is everything. That's why you can have two or three people standing there and only one of them see the UFO. That's the one in the vibrational state to connect with that next level of consciousness. So this being a big game and this being just a big thing where you just learn everything you can or do whatever the hell you want. That's what it's all about. It's just about, but there are special things here like spirituality, like conspiracy theories. There are elements here and secret things that you can adventure on. And I think that when you hit kind of the exploration of spirituality in this incarnation, whatever this is, or however many times you come here, uh, then this is kind of the one where you're like, oh, okay, you know, all the pieces sort of fit together. This is sort of inherent to an old soul, if you want to put it that way, kind of a, that's what we kind of gravitate towards, because it's a little bit closer, if not the truth. Yeah. Anybody want to expand on that? Or, or... Anybody want to jump in? Let's. Uh, does anybody have a opinion on? Uh, oh, okay, Matthew, you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's so many great topics here, and I'm just taking notes as you guys go along. Um, but I, I like what Mark said, just talk, talking about uh, waking up to our spiritual nature. So for me, when I was a kid, I was a martial artist, so I wanted to break bricks and do these kinds of things. But it talked about uh, mind, body, spirit. So I was trying meditation, using my mind to do these things, right? But in my teenage years, I, I had two channels, and one of them. Um, would just show people starving to death on TV all day, every day. And I would just look at that and be like, this doesn't make any sense. How can there be so many multimillionaires? Um, but we can't feed these people rice. It doesn't make any sense. So I start researching some things and I remember distinctly writing in my journal, the point, the lights went off. I was like, Oh my God, like they're doing this on purpose. This is insane. Why would anybody architect a reality of harm? It doesn't make any sense. And so that was kind of like just really uncovering and questioning everything. But you know, it's, it's this honest pursuit of the truth, wherever that leads, if it's, if it totally contradicts everything that you were taught or indoctrinated in or whatever happened before, if you get a higher truth, um, then that's got to win. If your pursuit is the truth and the same with your spiritual nature, when you realize that you're a spiritual being and you have this life force or this impulse or this conscience to know, you know, right from wrong or to do your best is to honestly engage with that to the best of your ability because it is a mystery right if we knew everything we would know what's going on and this would be easy and it seems like 
right now, especially with the world and the way it is, it's like an obvious choice between good and evil, between wanting to do right, to wanting to know the truth, to wanting not to harm. Now we have people that are going to be paid to, you know, enforce and uh, inflict harm on other people. And uh, I've been thinking from the beginning of this, like, I always want to know, am I doing the right thing? Right. Cause I had the masks on. And so if I wear the mask, am I protecting people? But if I don't want to wear the mask and this is nonsense, I don't want to comply. So I'm thinking about all these different things. And one of my friends, uh, gave me this quote by Rudolf Steiner, and it said, anything that seeks to restrict or bind by definition is Luciferian. And when we realize this is a spiritual battle, and if you want to know if you're on the side of right or wrong, well, are you trying to restrict or bind somebody? And what Sam was talking about is uh, his own battle. Like, how can we um, empower ourselves, heal ourselves? Because I can't push the button to stop human trafficking. I can't push the button to stop starvation. I can't push the bar button to stop this agenda 2030 and all the nonsense of these guys, but I can live the best life that I can and I can affect my family and I can affect my community. And just like with what's going on in Australia, they're going to have their own battles. So the more spiritually sound that we can be in mind, body, spirit, and our soul, the more equipped we're going to be to deal with whatever scenario uh, comes our way. Keith, you want to, you want to jump in? Yeah, no, I think that, the way that everyone's sort of balancing the light and the dark in their own metaphors and experiences is uh, the beautiful medley of what we're all experiencing right now and it's various multifaceted kind of effervescence. And sort of the metaphor that I wanted to offer is my personal experiences in that way of kind of the flavor that we get from what we're going through was when I was living in Thailand, I went to a monk talk, which is when you get the opportunity to talk to a monk and the monk gets to practice talking in English, and you get to practice talking to a monk. So it works out for everyone. And he offered me uh, an insight that I thought was pretty nice about life being nothing but a cooking process, and how it's something that takes time, and that it, it takes all those different, different ingredients in just the right way, at just the right time. It isn't just that you need the right ingredients, because you can't just leave them there on the table. You actually got to cook with them. That's the only way you're going to get that flavor, It's going through it. And so I, I just like the balance that everyone's bringing, talking about their own individual recipe in their own individual way. Well, I think the simple way of looking at it is it is good versus evil. Now, you could kind of see that perspective regardless if you're religious, spiritual, none of the above. Like, I mean, I, I kind of feel like everybody's on the same team now. It, it's just sometimes I think that the religious or the spiritual thing, the labels can kind of divide people. But we are all on the same team we all have all the same i mean it's almost the same thing right i mean it does one lead to the other does i mean has there been cases where being spiritual leads you into becoming religious or being religious leads you into being spiritual i mean can you have one without the other do you guys have opinions on that well i think every i think human beings inherently have to like worship something whether they know it or not and we're in an extremely secular society now. And so people are worshiping science. Like we, we talk about that a lot, but I think, I think I see it more just people that are just like nothing might be worshiping the government or science or things like that. And I think there's there, I, I just think like everything is kind of a cult and <laughs> It's, you can't not worship something. And so some people in their spiritual path end up like worshiping just themselves. Like they're, uh, they're so inwardly focused that they're just like only focusing on themselves. And then other people are only focusing in a religious sense on like a, a deity or like God or Jesus or something. But I don't think humans can escape worshiping things. And I think the, the whole world right now is inadvertently worshiping um, or unconsciously worshiping like science or governments or intellectual ideas. Like people kind of worship um, academic th things. So um, that's what I think when it comes to like religion, like there's religions out there that, that we don't identify as religions. Um. But let's be clear that People who have a strong internal sense of self, uh, of just self, I guess, don't need to worship anybody. There's people who are leaders naturally, and their method of leadership is not to say, I'm a leader, look at me, everybody follow me, be me, uh, you know, but to empower other people to be their own leader. 
And those people don't get worshipped, but they're like the best spiritual teachers. They're the best teachers of any kind, really. And they're the best leaders of all, but they don't really necessarily get looked at as leaders in our society because our society thinks leaders are like these big dick energy people who are like, look at me and I know everything. And people gravitate towards that because we've been trained to not value ourselves, our intuition, our internal knowing, and to know that we can be anything that we see that we appreciate in the world or that we worship in the world because worship really means to just find worth in something and when we find worth in something it's really just us saying wow i like that that's a reflection of me i want to be more like that but instead of being told we can be that we can become that we can develop that we're told well someone else is going to do it better than you so just follow them and do what they tell you to do you know and our education system reinforces that and all of these things reinforce that but i don't think it's inherent and i think we can like change that and transmute that into empowering people to be their own leaders and not worship, you know, in a church or these leaders. And, and also, hi, Dan. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, my, just got a weird emergency alert. Hold on. Can no. I add to that? Just, just, read, just read out loud, Dan. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, to what Lindsay's saying, it's basically individuating, really becoming an individual. And if we look at what's happening, there's, oh, let's be inclusive and, and bolster um, your self-expression. But it's like, oh, you have purple hair, but you're like, you're homogenized with everyone else in, in, uh, in what's, what's down the pipeline. So I really think like I observe people who've individuated, who have a sense of self, again, which is connected to the spirit, are not... Um, akin to being part of this mass psychosis that we're seeing. Well, one thing to also consider is that the word religion means to bind, right? Religate. So we are in nature religious beyond any institutionalized sense, right? So regardless of any church, we are religious because we are bound to this earth, just how the earth is bound to the sun and the sun is bound to the solar system. However you want to look at it, either it's a geocentric or heliocentric, there's a binding nature to how we are. And so what liberates us from that bind is our spirituality, right? Because then our path to seeking something that is free and, and not encompassed by this mundane world is what we want to consider as divine or bliss or joyful. And so that path is an internal mechanism that is within all of us. And what institutionalized religion has done is has taken ownership of the process of doing that when we have it already equipped within us and knowing deep within us that the love and the bliss that we feel like for instance, it's, uh, for instance, having a child or our family or our friends or our passions, whatever that allows us to feel a kind of freedom to do what we want, then there's a trajectory in the initiation and having a deeper and deeper spiritual experience to be unbound by the body that is naturally bound to everything that there is here. And so it, it flips us into this kind of dichotomy between a physical sense and a non-physical sense where we almost can't help but be physical, but when we introduce spirituality and we introduce practices that allow us to let go of that, we go into a non-physical sense of our existence that is no longer bound by space and time, that is into a realm of time space and that is exceedingly expansive in all directions infinitely. And so when we actually can root ourselves into that understanding of religion and that it's actually a part of us, then there's actually this kind of... Um, uh, synchronicity that unfolds just like a, a bud of a flower that's so tightly wound up at first and as it's growing it can't help but release and and open right so the sense of the institutionalized state of religion is to keep that flower bound up that only its god and its way of understanding things can actually unveil its nature when it's not true at all because we have that within us deep and that I think is what our true nature is and that bliss of unfolding deeper and deeper within ourselves. Yeah, I'd like to, to comment. Oh, go on oh. for then Jenny jump. 
I'd like to comment just on, because we're, ta- we're getting into religion quite a bit here, and um, I think it was necessary for human consciousness for the past couple thousands of years to have religion, and in human history, um, religion w- was important. And of course, I'm an astrologer, so I'll come at it from an uh, astrological standpoint as well to give that feedback. But we are moving out of a specific age, and that's the age of Pisces, which is the age of priest and king consciousness, where the power was given to the ruler or to the person with the religious power or knowledge and texts. And this was just part of a natural cycle and a rhythm um, that would present itself. So a lot of what we're talking about is we're kind of moving out of a larger dark age, and we're moving into this age of Aquarius, which is the um, influx of science and community and individuality and equality and that is the next cycle that we're moving into and it does coincide with um the mayan calendar and the the vedic the yuga cycles that we're actually moving up in frequency and that's what the ascension process is all about is an increase in vibrational frequency in consciousness and when that occurs you stop giving your power over um, because you're not quite as unified Um, on a physical level, you're more individuated on a physical level, but you're tuning to a unity consciousness, which that's what we call 5D or the fifth dimension. So whether you want to call it new age or not, um, we are ascending in frequency. And that's what the Schumann resonance is all about. And I'm glad we brought the Schumann resonance into the conversation. So on top of all of this religion, Uh, making its way out of our culture. Uh, We're moving into going within, you could say worshiping ourselves, because that really is where we should be placing our worth. And then it will reflect itself out here. And a lot of these, because I don't really come at this from a conspiracy standpoint, and that's not really where my interest interest is, and I respect all that. But I also believe we're moving into higher states of frequency that allow our consciousness to create different realities. Um, so if someone, if a bunch of people get together and they truly believe that there's a flat earth, they can create that where we're moving into consciously. And we don't need religion to do that anymore because the power is within us. And so we're not buying into a collective thought pattern or thought form, which is causing the same cycles to keep repeating. Now it's going to start splitting into all these different directions and go into all these different individualized directions. And then we'll start having all these different parallel realities that we can tune to. And that's kind of where we're moving, I believe. Uh, Jenny, do you want to share? Yeah, I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, the person who just spoke before me was talking about cycles and because that's really what's uh, got my goat here. Um, But I love hearing um, these two opposing things that keep happening in the conversation as well, which is this like desire to take action and strive towards freedom and and do something and, and, and take action. Um, and then there's this other component too, which is more of like this, this uh, surrendering into something or acknowledging that it's all love or um, um, yeah, just like that, that more surrendering into the fate of it all. Um, and earlier I was, uh, I heard this metaphor and I, it's just been kind of like on my mind today. So I'm kind of seeing everyone's conversations through that lens today. And it was talking about the idea of sankalpa, which um, if you're interested in like yoga nidra, it's something that you would kind of develop as like your purpose or your, your innermost heart's desire. And there was a couple different um, metaphors that were used in, in what I was studying to describe that. And um, So one of them would be like, um, you know, you're on a, you're on a motorboat and, and you're, you're completely directing where your boat's going to go. You aren't really considering, you know, the waves or the current. And I think that's, and there's a, there's a, there's a truth in that, you know, there's a desire to be free, the desire to not be bound by, by the winds of fate or by, um, any of these outside pressures that are going on. Um, and then there's, there's another aspect, which would be more of like a passive where you're just floating on a raft. And so you're just, you're surrendered to it and you're um, just going with the flow of life and you trust that it's all one, it's all good. It's all love and light, all of those things. 
And where I find myself recently is in this third option, which is kind of like a blending of what everyone's been talking about, which is you're on a sailboat. And so if you've ever, I've never sailed before, but I imagine you have to have a a great sense of awareness of your environment and also of yourself and how you fit into that environment. And so, um, you know, cycles are very important to me and and hold a lot of significance in in my understanding of the reality. And, um, you know, with reflecting on what a lot of people are saying, um, what acknowledging a cycle is, is is just as simple as like, um, you know, where the moon is right now or where I am on the planet um, can have a really profound effect on, on myself right now. Um, so in a very practical way, just understanding what a cycle is and recognizing that we're all part of it and that you cannot separate it from, from this God nature that we all are, um, kind of a cycle unfolding, which is, which is God's own nature, which is this like birth and growth and decay and death. And, um, you know, there's no part of that that isn't, that isn't part of that, um, that God nature. I just want to add one more thing. Cause I'm glad, cause you just kind of tied so many things I wanted to say in so eloquently spoken as well. Um, cause sometimes I can go all over the place, but the cycles that I'm seeing it, there's a piece about it on my end where it's like, this is supposed to be happening right now. This ascension process, this, um, awakening, this mass ascension that the planet is going through right now, this is kind of coded into the program. It's supposed to happen this way. And before you can ascend, um, before you can um, keep evolving, we can just keep it very simple like that. Um, Layers and layers of old wounds, ancestral trauma, um, things of old, outdated paradigms and beliefs, they have to come to light. They have to come to the surface and they must be shed. They must be processed, healed, worked through individually and collectively. So I feel like a lot of the evil or the wrongdoing or the the power struggles and the um, intentionally wanting to harm people on the planet is actually happening. It's real. I definitely believe that the ugliness, if you want to call it that, but it also gives us who do have a more awakened sense, if you will, um, a sense of what we do want from what we don't want which allows us to pivot and create something new. And it is all a part of a purging, I believe, just like I like to use a face mask as an example or something like that. You use a skincare product, you break out. It's because it brought it to the surface. It's not the skincare product or the mask that's doing anything wrong. There is a purging that has to happen before there's a healing. Yeah. One thing I just wanted to talk about, it's funny because like, I'm hearing people say I'm this, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist or I'm spiritual and I'm not religious. And like, I feel like we all have a lot more in common than those labels because I think we all agree that we believe there's something more, right? I mean, just to kind of simply put it, like there's something more and ignorance isn't bliss, right? We're all searching, like Dan said, we're all looking for something. We're all searching for answers. And regardless if that leads you down the spiritual rabbit hole or religious rabbit hole or conspiratorial rabbit hole. Um, and and I think they, they're all good, right? And you can make the argument that any of those rabbit holes could be bad, but it's not because those rabbit holes are inherently bad. It's just because sometimes you can be, you know, it can lead to you putting on blinders and not being open to other perspectives. But that's why I think it's so important to constantly self-reflect and maybe sometimes not plant your flag on any one thing, right? Uh, John, you want to jump in? Yeah, but I saw somebody else. Project Chani, were you ready to talk? Chani, Ch- yes, Chani. Chani, Chani. Um, well... I am a MAGA witch, which I feel like is just redundant to say witch twice, but I do like (laughs) to say it in Latin. So I'll say MAGA, 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 because I know it triggers a lot of demons. Um, I am actually a witch who is not a pagan and I'm not Wiccan. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the goddess Artemis. I believe all the way back into the ancient religions, the Kemet. I believe in Solomon's temple. I love the Masons and the rituals of the Rosicrucians. I like to look up the Canaanites. I think all that stuff is there so that I can find it. 
and a Tower of Babel philosophy that happened to all of us. And I think sometimes when people sit in just the warrior mindset, they forget that their job as a warrior is to protect the mom holding a baby. So all of us have all these sides of ourselves. And so I like to call myself a gray witch, like a Jean Gray witch, a phoenix rising. And so I own my gray. And sometimes I'm dark fucking gray. And I'm dark gray so that I can totally protect my Reiki healers and my Christians and my moms and those really bright people that I don't ever want them to be polluted. And sometimes I'm really fucking light gray because I need to hold the baby in my lap and I need to kiss the mom on her forehead and get her to sleep at night because she can't be up around the fire with me. I'm doing ritual and weird shit. She can't be up right now. It'll freak her out. So I kind of have a place for everything. And I think that so much of conspirituality is spirituality because you have to trust winner's history on this version of any book you read. You have to trust that the winner had your best interest at heart. Otherwise, I have to assume we're all running on the loser's history, which is only in our intuition, only in our tools of discernment, only in these energies that we feel amongst each other when we're chatting and vibing and growing and knowing. So, uh, yeah, I'm more so, to me, the word even knowledge means no ledge. It means the only way you can really know it is to know you fucking know nothing. So that's how I feel about it. I just wanted to add because, you know, Cheney, bravo, by the way. Um, I think, you know, your point brings to mind for me a concept that Michael Wan and I have been talking about on our new podcast. And it's the idea of an apex nurturer and an apex protector as the new spiritual archetypes. And you see this apex predator sort of mark and scar our recent history, this like archetype of the apex predator and, and somebody trying to, you know, take what's theirs and that whole mindset. I think what we're evolving into with this age of Aquarius is a position of an apex nurturer in the feminine and an apex protector in the masculine and where the two meet, you know, and I think that's uh, something to strive for. That's really all I have to add there. Don, do you want to go? Oh, gr- Graham. Uh, just a quick one. Yeah, I think the importance of spirituality is that discernment, you know, cultivating discernment. I like how Dan and Alex challenged, you know, the spiritual bypass using the Australia example. But, you know, you would hope that, you know, if you had had some deep practice and you could discern that and start creating your own reality, then maybe you would avoid that situation. Or if you do get stuck in that situation, are you going to be a victim about it or just accept that, that it's there? I mean, I think we have to <clears throat> just realize that we can create our, our own reality, a new, a new world, a new reality and try and try and get, I mean, maybe you'll bump into the right people. Maybe you'll start uh, manifesting different things. If you can, I mean, there's a difference between like, I think we're all brainwashed and, and the difference between us and everybody else is we know we're brainwashed and we're trying to discern it. The people that are watching TV all day long, they have no, they, they'd have no clue. Right. And it's surprising how many of these little, uh, whether it's UFO groups or yoga groups or new age or spirituality are split even down the middle on all this. There's, there's, there's just no discernment. Right. So um, I don't know if I forgot where I was going with that. But anyways, it's, uh, it's good to be here for listening. Hey, Graham, it's good to see you too, again. Uh, you know, I had to, I just wanted to say a couple of things. I think these are everybody has made incredible points and I've learned a lot tonight, not just about you, but about Mine are the perspectives. Best. Sorry. Um, but the thing that I, I kind of had to go through was to let go of all of my illusions. And, and that was a lifetime of illusions to let go of that started from childhood to now. Um, the death of Basically, it's like this. We have uh, an addiction in this world, and we are codependent children of alcoholic parents who are driving the car. And we are hoping beyond all hope that at the last minute, they will pull over, kindly stop the car, turn off the keys, and hand it to us. And that's a hard and sobering reality to know that, no, this was not made for you and me, uh, because, and through a series of events we've delegated our authority over um, to parental figures 
that we have projected the world upon and have been conditioned on how to feel and think about things that are the inverse of the truth. Having said that, um, I truly have found in this time, and it kind of it mirrored what many of you said, is like, what is the role of people in this time, right? A hard one to say because you're going, well, we need leaders and we need builders and we need planners and we need all, that's all true. But it really rests on the shoulders, I believe, of Christ the shepherd, which is the, the protector of the flock of the sheeple, if you will, the sheep. And when one of them goes astray, he searches high and low day and night until that one is found and brings them back and will do it over and over and over again. No different than a parent to a child. And so that part, which I was contemplating just the, the basics today of, of breaking it down into the smallest of pieces that is digestible is to say unnecessary suffering, reduce unnecessary suffering within yourself and you will give that gift to others um, because the, the truth of the matter is whatever, however we want to look at this, what we have is a split in consciousness. That is exactly what happened. And this fear of dying is the catalyst to that. How that will turn out, what I kind of always just say is once everything that once was is no more. But if we're to look back at that story, the purpose of looking back at that story is as a teacher of wisdom to say, how is it that we don't allow ourselves to become deceived again, not in the same ritual that we participated before, which was believing that this time would be different, but that our time in our life would be different by exploring the depths of who and what we are, not just in relation to the world as it's presented to us, but the one that we explore and express almost like a child does beyond words. And, and we talk about meditation and spirituality, and it's the hemi-sync of the brain. The, this is Ian McGillcrest's work, which I've talked about on some of your podcasts, and it's very, very important because it, it actually shows that we've been overstimulated on the left hemisphere of our brain for the last five years, uh, such to a point that narcissistic drives are common, commonplace for a lot of people today. And opinions based solely on someone's assumption uh like you said there are going to be multiple realities we haven't even seen the the finished result of all these buckets that they're getting everybody in for the programs that they want and the truth of the matter this is the last thing i want to say the truth of the matter is we could we can talk about these agendas how they're going to unfold, who the companies are behind them, the players, the false prophets, all of the puppets. And, and, and again, four years or whatever will go by and there will be more refugees and where will the land, food, water, and nourishment and the knowledge and the wisdom to help them actually live be if all of us are standing around in our spiritual place doing absolutely nothing within ourselves and each other. That's really the key, and each other. Because that's, to me, where community begins, is that that space within you, that, that, that space create, is created outwardly and invites all people, refugees, to come in. Um, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I, I think everybody here is really beautiful, and I can't wait to see what happens and unfolds over the next several years. Ron, you want to jump in, Ron? Once you uh, unmute. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on first time on Union of the Unwanted. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share something. You know, when you talk about going through an awakening or whatever, uh, you know, spirituality versus religion or whatever. My uh, my dad's family was all super super religious, and uh, and my father was not. And uh, but for some reason, he thought I needed to be and. And he would try to send me off to Sunday school and send me off to church or whatever. And and uh, and he found out real fast that that wasn't going to work for me. Right? Uh, he had a he had a different plan for me going forward. And and you know the life that I that I led growing up was uh, one where I had to really question morals because I always considered myself to be a very moral person. And and you know, long story short, I ended up uh, just doing a little federal time and. And after that, that's when I really started to start waking up 
to the fact that, okay, I could be moral. I could be moral, a moral person without having religion. Uh, and then going forward in life, you know, you just say, okay, uh, you don't have to be religious to know if you're a, a good person or not. You don't have to be religious at all. And, and that was even before I even like, like dealt with spirituality. But my, but my biggest awakening, believe it or not, and I've said this to Mark and, and some other people on the panel here, that, that COVID coming in is really what brought a lot of us together and really woke a lot of us up. Uh, because now you can see you know, what, what's going on in the world and, and what we can deem it to be moral and what isn't moral. Uh, and then like that, that was the beginning of my spiritual awakening, because as I started studying more and learning more about what was going on and meeting all these people and kind of learning from them as well, it's like, okay, so now, uh, now your brain is taking in, uh, like what John said before, the one side of our brain is getting inundated with all this information for all these years. And we're, and we're trying to, uh, you know, figure out if, it, if it's good information, if it's bad information or whatever. But just this whole deal now is, is really what's going to bring, bring out the spirituality in people uh, from, from my perspective, because a lot of things that, that, that I've talked about and learned about and being on shows in the last year or so, uh, I would have never thought that like even two or three years ago. So when you start learning more about spirituality and and, uh, and things like that, it just opens up your mind more so, so that you can see what's going on, uh, you know, out here in the world with all this COVID stuff and all the crazy people. And, and now that, you know, we're the ones that don't want to comply by wearing masks, we don't want to get vaccinated and everything like that. Now, we're being looked at as the evil ones, right? So, so you know, how, how does that work? How does that work? We're the we're the, we're the evil ones when and when in my in my point of view, like we're the ones that are awakened, and and where does spirituality come in on that? I mean, how can we use spirituality to try to to help these other people understand that maybe that they're coming from the wrong perspective, they're coming from the wrong view, and maybe they need to be woken up. So we've tried to wake people up for the last year and a half, but I think right now, uh, I, I think that people just don't want to be woken up. You know, I, I think those people just need to, we just need to stop trying to wake those up, those people up and just try to push our message a different way through, through the use of podcasts and things like that. Uh, but I just want to, I just wanted to kind of, to put that out there, but, you know, coming from a religious beginning and then getting away from that, going through some crazy stuff in my life and then becoming a more spiritual person has really opened up my mind uh, to, to, uh, you know, what I want to say, open up my mind to what life really could be, you know, because, because growing up was always money, 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 you need to make money. Well, you want me to do this to make money? I don't want to do that to make money. That's not what I deem to be moral. So that's when I, I broke away from all that. And here we are now. There's an old saying, man. Uh, don't worry about waking up the sheep, worry about waking up the sleeping lions. And uh, I think that's very important for what we do everybody on this show is to understand who you're trying to wake up. You, you know, I have these rules of the Ronin and one of them is you do not give knowledge to those who do not seek it. It's like, you can't wake people up until they're ready to be woken up. And, you know, I think that's very important that you don't just go around. I see people when they get new into conspiracies, they just want ev to save everybody. And I, I you know, you got to give them their space because we all go through that. But then you got to kind of like understand that, you know, you want to change the world. You got to change yourself. You want to make it. You, you really want to make change. Get out of the system. Make your own system. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like when Jenny and I were talking when she was on my show. It's like you got to learn the game, man. You got to learn how to play the game. And that's, you that's know, Sam, where that's, that's where I was, Sam. I was trying to wake up so many people and trying to get the message out. And then it, it took me a year to figure out that these people aren't listening. Like they, they're taking in so much on, on whatever magic is being used on them. And, and, and come on, we all know we're being lied to. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind we're being lied to. So I've actually come to the point where I'm like, okay, so now maybe I'm, I'm going to just focus on a core group and maybe try to work on 10 people or 20 people. You know, on my show, I said, if 10 people listen to my show, great. You know, if maybe they can get the message that, you know, what, 
you know, if they want to listen to what we have to say instead of mainstream media or all this other crap that would, gets getting thrown at us. And, and, you know, the news, they pound it into us every day, every day. It's the same thing up here in New England where I am. The news is the same thing. Numbers are going up. This is going up. People got to do this. You got to do that. It's like, it's not, it, you're not going to change these people's minds. They're so brainwashed. They're just not going to, they're just not going to believe what you say. And I really don't know what it's going to take for them to, to, to understand that they're being lied to because they don't, they don't want to admit that they're being lied to. You know, it really reminds me, it reminds me so much of like, you know, uh, so being a person in recovery myself, like I think back to like where I was when I was in my addiction and, you know, people coming to you and trying to tell you, dude, you got to wake up, you got to get clean. You know what I mean? I was not ready to hear that message until I personally hit a rock bottom around it, you know, until I, my eyes were forced to be opened up, you know, and I feel like, you know, being in recovery, you know, it's centered around spirituality. It's centered around spiritual principles. It's something that, you know, when you arrive to recovery, you're like, you know, the people that have had success before are now telling you, oh, you have to open yourself up to like a spirit, like, like spirituality that I didn't really understand. But, but, but to me, it's like, that's just been the core of my growth and my progress, you know? And I see to me, like just being in the conspiracy community, I've been looking at it in those and through that lens lately, like just in the last, like really like, I don't know, six months, like seeing the parallels between being a person in recovery and then also, you know, being a person who's awake to what's going on. There's so many different parallels. I can't go and shake people and be like, Hey, you need to wake up, but maybe I can plant a seed, which is what we do in recovery. You know, like you may not get clean this time, but we're going to plant a seed and hopefully, you know, at least you know where to go when you want to want, want that help. And, you know, in recovery, we saw, we say like, you know, when you're, when you're in your addiction, it's characterized by like the mental aspect is the obsession and the physical aspect is the compulsion and the spiritual aspect is the complete self-centeredness. The spiritual malady is the self-centeredness of it. And so the solution now being to invert all of that. And now the solution spiritually is to be of others centered and, and reaching out to others. And then a lot of times when people are first entering the program, you know, a lot of times what we talk about is just like just principles. You know, you can bring it back to just basic core principles, like just being like honest and, and open-minded to the fact that maybe you don't have all the answers and just be willing to do something bold, you know, and, and to, to help others. You know, a lot of that, you know, that's just been my journey is just open myself up. And, and, and at the very end of the day, you know, if I can just revert back to just the principles of the spiritual principles that I've been taught, then I'm probably okay. And if I can even just choose one at any given time, if I'm struggling, you know, just be a little bit more honest, just be a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more loving, you know, just, just, just for today, you know, like that will help me get through. So it's just amazing to see how the parallels of being in recovery and the parallels of, of, of being in, in the conspiracy community are so overlapping. I'm actually kind of doing a little exploration of it myself right now. So anyway, I just want to throw that in there. Catherine, <laughs> would you like to share? Everybody's been calling for you like Catherine, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm just sitting back here ready to jump into the jump rope whenever, <laughs> whenever it's time. It's so amazing what's happening here in this community. It's awesome. And I love what you just, just shared is you got to take that moment to connect to that compassion, connect to that message, to connect to that frequency and vibration. And for me, this is what it's all been about. This is what my spiritual path has led me to is frequency and vibration and this quantum entanglement and quantum field that we're all creating, co-creating, responding to, adjusting to, balancing in every single moment and every single second, every single thing, word, thought, chair, internet, <laughs> every part of your body, every organ system cell carries a frequency and vibration and they're all interacting all at the same time and bringing this balance. We know things that carry a higher frequency and vibration. We know things that carry a lower frequency and vibration. And for me, what it's been about is, you know, I also started kind of like Ron, I was raised religious, but I actually loved going to church because I could see all the angels in my spiritual eye and I could see all that was going on. And I just felt like it was this amazing show. And I would just felt so like happy. I would like ask friends. I was that weird neighbor girl would be like, can I go to church with you today? <laughs> because I wanted to just experience what was out there, what was in this field, like what was really happening. And then when I was a young lady in my late twenties, I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And that is what actually like catapulted me into this discovery of healing and what else is possible and what else is out there. And not to just agree with what was being told with me, but to consider all things. And for me, I am like, when I connect to myself and I start to connect to 
the natural frequency and vibration of my heart, of my soul, spirit, message, information, my field. I am very sunshine, rainbows. <laughs> like I am that person who's like, and we just all love each other. But that's my kuleana. That's my calling. That's not going to be everybody's and it can't be. We all have to have our different path and our different piece of this puzzle. And that's what's so cool about this group tonight is because I love hearing where everybody's coming from and feeling it and tuning into it. You know, for me, I started using frequency and vibration and ancient self-healing techniques and, and source field and vibration to actually heal myself. And it started to happen. I started to feel better. And with that, I started to align more with my heart and what balance was within me. And actually my channels opened and I um, started to communicate more in that way. And this ability for me to communicate and connect with animals stepped forward, like smacked me in the face. I didn't even really want it. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> this is not what I want to be doing. But I realize now, and I'm so grateful for this combo because I realized later, even more in this conversation, that this is actually the pathway. It's not about going and like shaking people until their vibration changes. Well, maybe, but in a different way, we have to be creative. We have to do it from our own nature. We have to do it from our own discovery, our own balance, our own uh, gifts that we have. And that can be different for everybody. Some people it's debating. Some people it's questioning. For me, it's like, I'm going to bring rainbows and sunshine to you and connect to your pet and share their message. People are so open to their pets and what they, they connect to them, which is this unconditional love, which are, you know, they're masters at communicating through frequency and vibration. They teach us how to do this. So here I am. Yes, I'm going to offer you a weird message to your pet. And it ends up shifting their entire <laughs> frequency and vibration. And then they're coming to me to like, what else is possible? What else can happen? And this changed my entire life. And that's not really what I'm trying to do. I'm just being me. And I'm just like sharing what I got. And I'm not trying to argue with what anyone else has. And I think there is healthy debate. I'm not saying that at all. That's just not my coolion. <laughs> It's not my place in this puzzle. So I'm not trying to step in that place. And every time I have, it's created chaos in a not so positive way for me. And I've heard messages and got my hand smacked. Like that is not your place. That is not what you're supposed to be doing in this world. It's going to confuse you. Just talk to the animals. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, you can tell I'm very passionate, excited about this, but um I think, you know, raising that frequency and vibration, creating that shift in the quantum field is where the manifestation power is. We can create anything we want, anything. And these shifts are happening. And this is what people are waking up to is that they are the creators. They carry the power. They carry the frequency and vibration from the source. They carry this power. It is inherent from the cosmos, divine and source to every single being. And you are protected, supported in that power beyond your, your wildest dreams ever. <laughs> I totally agree. So that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> well, it was worth the way. I'll tell you that right now. More bang for your bunk. Hey, uh, can we get the guy who looks like he solves uh, pet murder mysteries, Maverick Matthews? Can you join us? <laughs> I'd love to hear a little bit from you, dude. Is is my is my mic okay, guys? I'm not in my yeah, studio. Yeah, you sound Can great. You? Okay, I'm 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 working on borrowed time here. My son's asleep. It's, he's going to end this monologue, so please just uh, bear with me on this diatribe. I feel really blessed to be here. Thank you very much. Um, one thing that has really resonated and reverberated with me this whole time is, and I'm into simplicity. What we're all really talking about here is taking an active role in this life like because when you start to take an active role what path am i going to take how many paths are there oh well, let's look around guess what there's not that many there's only a couple there's a left hand and a right and, and you're like oh let me experiment with both a little bit when you're young and you're really trying to figure things out it doesn't matter what you call it, it doesn't matter like how you define anything really it, it, what matters is what kind of active role you take in this life and and sam sam was really one of the first people who warmed me up to this once you start taking an active role all of a sudden you end up in front of spirituality 
And you're like, what is this thing? Because I've done all the material stuff. I've, I've experimented. I've done the things. I've gone down the dark paths. I found myself at the bottom of the barrel. I've picked myself up. I did learn a lot. I don't necessarily know that I enjoy that methodology of learning, but it seems to be one that is intrinsic to the system, that we cannot divest from the system. Okay, there's pain associated with growth. And one of the biggest things we have to do as people who want to take an active role in spirituality is be resilient and, and be able to put up with pain because this is miserable, man. I, I, I think this is the, I honestly, I hate to say it. I think we're in the lowest energy realm. I think this is the proving ground. And I think the trade-off for being given a carapace, a physical carapace with which to physically experience things as a spirit, I think the trade-off is that the majority of it is not pleasant. And that's uncomfortable. And one of the things I teach in my outdoor school is you don't have to be responsible for the rules that have been set up in the system. They're really tough rules. And you don't have to hold yourself accountable. You don't have to have anxiety about them. You're required to steal every day from someone to eat and drink and everything. I mean, we're here as a blessing. Oh, oh, oh. There he is. I got to go. I love y'all. Thank you for letting me be here. I'm, I'm coming, Bubba. I love you guys. Sure and powerful. Alice Romanelli, you want to say something? You talk to a breakfast of chicken snake god. Talk to us. What's up, guys? Uh, I, too, am a knuckle dragger uh, myself, and uh, I don't know how, but somehow being a knuckle dragger and uh, partying hard as a you know young adult and actually probably a young teenager, I stumbled across spirituality, and I'm going to take this out. Take this. Spirituality and conspiracies. Um, through uh, some heavy psychedelics, uh, I came across Christ consciousness. And once I felt it, saw it, and tasted it, I've been chasing it ever since. I'm actually go in the space right now where I'm uh, not trying to grab it through psychedelics because I know I could get it through um, breath work, meditation, prayer. But um, I was like, what the hell is this thing? And Sam calls it a Braxis, the chicken snake God. Uh, the, the, the shamans I were with were, told me it was a uh, Quetzalcoatl. I had no idea what this thing was, but I saw it and more than just saw it. I felt it. And um, it's in my heart that I know that it was Christ consciousness. And it's interesting when I go back and I, and I read after that, I wanted to read the Bible and I wanted to, consume some religious text because I looked at it through a different lens that Jesus was trying to teach the Christ. And uh, once I learned that, it was just blew my mind. Um, before I, I, I stumbled upon that, a book that changed my life uh, was The Four Agreements. And I was a kind of a troubled little guy at some point in my life. And my mom just left this book next to my bed. And uh, we didn't have phones or stuff like that to mess around with. So I couldn't sleep one night and I just started thumbing through it. And I've read that book. I, re I read that book at least once a year. And I've, I've been lucky enough to sit with uh, Don Miguel himself quite a few times. And his teachings have changed my life. Um, plant medicines have changed my life. Um, I don't think it's something that you need to, um, you could, something you could chase. And I don't plan on doing that, but that got me to spirituality and uh, I love what Sam always says about how conspiracies brought him there, because that's exactly what happened to me. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, because I know uh, Midnight Mike, Marty, uh, Scott, myself, uh, you know, Sam's an artist. Uh, so many people who, who find spirituality in music, right? Like, I mean, going to a concert, even playing music, writing music. I mean, there. that's a, a spiritual experience. It, it helps you self-reflect. It helps you analyze yourself and the world around you uh would you guys agree with that marty and, and scott i mean absolutely i would agree with that uh you know i think it's just one of those things that helps you look at the world through a certain lens in a certain context like just understanding how notes relate to each other un unveils certain patterns that exist you know what i mean that that just kind of you see in other places too you know it's just kind of just again just the just the natural order of things kind of reveals itself within music and how certain you know like like it's really just basic like music itself is really like there's in, in western music there's 12 notes that's it any song you've ever heard is just a combination of those 12 notes and within those 12 notes there's certain scales where there's like eight that only sound good together in a certain sequence you know what i mean and once you understand basic relational things you can then apply your artistic element to the actual 
formula and 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 it just creates an infinite universe of possibilities so it's just like within that you kind of look at things in a very spiritual way absolutely absolutely yeah and even when like i i write music too and um it's like the relationship with the the muse it's like that's like an ecstatic like speaking in tongues experience almost so that's like a whole nother just weird part of the human experience is when something hits you and then you just have to like record it or write it down or capture it and then share it and people are like wow that's so crazy you came up with that i'm like i kind of just received it so that's cool you cast One thing I wanted it out to say, oh, sorry oh uh, no i have Go on, Chief. <laughs> oh, you casted it out like spell casting, podcasting, broadcasting. That's what when you make an art of any sort or paint, you're creating a spell and then you're putting it out with your intentions for the universe. And that's magic. I totally agree oh. with that. Um, back to like sobriety and spirituality. You know, when I was growing up, I used to hear see all these like rappers and pro athletes. Suddenly, you know, they were just surrounded by, you know, partying, fast women, all that stuff. And I used to think, oh, man, that, that's the best, right? And it, it really did inf influence my life. And then they would suddenly become religious. And I always used to blame it on the fact that they knew that their time in the spotlight was coming to an end. And so I, I fully engaged in all that rock and roll lifestyle. And But then I started to really understand that. What they had gone through was they had did everything and everyone two, three times over. And what they had found out is that it was completely hollow, that there was nothing there. And that when they found spirituality and they came a vessel for the, the source, that their life changed. And so, you know, we I do a lot of spiritual uh, episodes on Zero, sometimes on Tim Fall Hat, and I have you know, religious people coming on and, you know, some people say they know the true religion, the true this, the true that, and that, you know, other religions and other philosophies are just the devil trying to pull a uh, sorcery on you. And I don't know what's right or wrong. I know history has been rev revised a thousand times, but the only thing I know is when I practice certain things in my life and these, I said it earlier, you know, law of attraction, law of abundance, love thy neighbor with discipline. Um, my life changes for the better. And that's the only thing I can focus on. Like, how do I feel when I do all these things? When I help others, when I give, you know, when I've had people come on and talk about, you know, uh, abundance versus scarcity, that changed my life. That changed my life. When I started practicing, you know, make $100, give away 50 bucks, you know, that changed my life, man. Giving away things to others, helping others, not keeping it to myself. You know, so much. I'm a product of the 80s and 90s. You know, greed is good. Oh, millionaires are really chintzy. They don't spread. All that I learned was a lie. All of that. The more I give away, the more I get sent back to me by the universe, man. That's why I've learned when I practice this in real time. This is what I've learned, man. And this is what I learned from spirituality is like, give it away. It will come back and finding connecting to source is like the most important thing to me every day. I do every day. I, I, I just make lists of what I'm thankful for my goals in life. And at the end of it is always my be a connection to, to God and a vessel of what he wants. And for me, a knuckle dragger, that's like the most dumb pussy shit I've ever heard in my life. But you know what? That's changed my life. And it's, I live in it and like, you know, what, man, glory be to God and all that stuff. You know, even saying that my body kind of tightened up a little bit, but it's just the truth, man. And it's like, and I'm very early into my journey. So I still have a, like a visceral reaction to it, but it's what I practice and what I do. And I, you know, I talked to my, you know, I, I've told this before. I had a cousin of mine who almost got murdered and everyone around her blamed her for everything that was going on in her life. And I just tried to tell her, man, change your perception You'll change your reality. And like nobody talks about that stuff. I doubt anyone of her and her friends will ever watch a show like this because it's never been presented to them. So we're all blessed to be here and we're all blessed to have heard this stuff. And our job is to spread the love to everybody to go, hey, man, 
no matter how bad dude there are people born into worlds of shit that rise up and become fucking just star seeds that change the way humanity looks and then there's people born with everything that can't get out of their own way so that's not it man it's like you're on a path and dude you and you have to change dude nobody's coming to save you that's the biggest thing i've ever learned if you want life to change you gotta make change nobody's coming to save you you gotta save yourself yes and i'll add to that like you said there is no path there is only the path and the path is exactly where you're at exactly what step you're taking exactly where you are and who you are like we said before radical honesty and if you get stuck in this like oh this religion that religion whatever None of that is actually, it's cool. It could help you for a minute, whatever. But in the overall, they all preach the exact same things. They all point to the exact same truths. They all have the exact same sorts of rituals and things. All of the elements are the same when you get down to it. Syncretism for the win. So you really can just, you can use any of them to find it, but it's all inside of you and it always has been and it always will be. You got it. I just wanted to add, you know, something that has come up to me in a couple of uh, different situations. And synchronistically, I opened this book today and this word appeared again, uh, Heoka, which is from the gift of power. It's a, a book by Archie Fire Lame Deer. And, you know, the, the role of the trickster, the, the sacred fool, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, when we get in into something that seems overwhelming, like learning this type of material, we call ourselves dumb, like knuckle draggers, like Sam and Mike just said, but there is a place for the sacred fool. And I know Lindsay and I have had a conversation about the tarot. We all know the fool is the first card in the tarot deck. And I think that's symbolic. It's, it's a reason we all have to start somewhere and we can't be too hard on ourselves when we start this journey of, of learning ourselves and, and learning our connection with the higher forces, you know, so we all start as a Heoka in some ways, and that could be a lonely path, you know, the sacred clown, the sacred trickster. It's a, it's a path of revealing and it's a path of power, but it's not one that you should take lightly. So it is, you know, interesting to be in this position here on a podcast is going out on people's phones is going off on people's computers. Some people are going to be entertained, educated, inspired. You know, we all are taking on the role of like a, a sacred clown in the way. And this is, is just a show, you know, connecting with our higher selves and then taking that inspiration and sharing it with others. Love that. Anybody else want to jump in? I'll jump in for hey, a second. Hey, Mike, how are you? Sam, uh, one of the things that Sam said uh, a while ago is talking about the rules of Ronan, about not bestowing information upon those that do not seek it. And it's a really good bit of advice. But inevitably, we want to talk about this stuff with people. And if you find yourself kind of engaging with somebody that's interested in knowing about whatever, if, whether it's your spirituality or it's conspiracies, like a lot of us talk about on our shows, I have found that it works better if you make it a two-way street instead of like a monologue where we just like unload information on some poor unsuspecting sap who just asked our opinion about something. I've done it the wrong way and it's 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 horrifying. So just to if you can ask the people questions. Get them, you know, instead of just say, you know, unloading on them say hey what do you make of what do you make of this get them to start thinking about it it's it seems to get their brain functioning where they go uh you know i never know i never really stopped to think about that you know just keep asking them questions um just as a just as one just tip of advice because i know i've done it the wrong way and it's come out uh you know when you bring up 9 11 at thanksgiving not good not not the right audience. So know your audience, right? If you want to engage with this, but I think Sam's right. You also have to like, you know, you have to sort of take inventory of your emotional energy as well. You know, and it's like, you don't want to waste it trying to talk to somebody who doesn't want to hear anything that you're talking about. So prioritizing who you're engaging with, I think is pretty important, especially now. So Charlie, you're, you're saying you've unloaded the wrong way is what you're saying. 
Oh man, bam. <laughs> Mike, you want to say anything? You got All a cool right. hat on. I want to hear from you, brother. Uh, I'm in total agreement about the hat because it's a freaking <laughs> awesome hat, and you're not the only one who said that. But <clears throat> regarding regarding the telling the people the wrong stuff at the wrong time, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's part of the rites of passage. I mean, I've only been here for a moment, but I certainly agree with that. And the Thanksgiving table table to go and share your insights. I don't think there could be anything funnier than that. Maybe 20 years from now, that'll be a trope on a sitcom. Anybody else want to jump in? I'd like to help you, Sam. I need help. I, I think that the best way to help you is for you to send me $1,000 <laughs> to, <expand, laughs> to expand your abundance. I love this talk. This is really, uh, really great that uh, the Internet exists and so we can get some of this, uh, these thoughts out there to people, you know, um, I guess for me, you know, the, the, the idea of an experience is a far more lasting and profound thing than, than talk, you know, and I've read a lot of shit and I've talked about a lot of this stuff and I, and I love it. It's, it's fun. But what, what am I like when I'm by myself and no one's around, I'm walking around, how do I feel? You know, that's really kind of the, the bottom line for me, you know, and I, and I, when I'm uh, comfortable and at ease and however I can get there, you know, I'm on the side of what works. That's a good thing for me. You know, I, um, and, um, and to me, it isn't about getting rid of the dark side. I, I kind of like that side too. Um, and pleasure seeking, it, it was, you know, I, that was a path that I went on uh, pretty hard, which, you know, Sam was talking about it with, uh, you know, people of extreme wealth and success finding that empty, but still, you know, a delicious cup of coffee in the morning and an orgasm, not bad, not a bad way to be a human. I like all that stuff, you know, I, and I don't think it's necessarily dark, but, you know, I do have, I still have, you know, um, a lot of sort of this uh, bucket attitude about when I hear things about truth and beauty and stuff and, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to make a little confession here. I was when I was listening to Catherine O'Shea. That's your name. Yeah, you were so wonderful, and I just loved your exuberance. And I thought, how great would it be if, out of the side of the screen, a pie just hit her in the face? What would she do? Would she laugh? I think you would. That's what I came to the conclusion that you would think it was really funny. I just, you know, I just like that whole sort of balance of the ironic uh, the horror and beauty of life all at the same time. Um, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Bob, Bob I can't take you anywhere. You can't. <laughs> I, I, I know. I go, I, Bob, just don't say anything that creeps everybody out. Just don't go. Have I, well, people are smiling. Does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little creepy. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Anybody else? No, no, I'm not done. <laughs> oh, okay, keep going. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, a thousand bucks. Like a, a I lot Sam of told us, you, you were done. <laughs> a lot of us, like whether you're talking about recovery or just any type of spiritual path, we got here because of some type of like trauma or something like difficult that forces you into a spiritual path. And there's tons of different ways, like. You could go full Christian evangelical because your life went totally south or you could go like, you know, Eastern or, you know, you, you, but I think there's a catalyst that caused this and the state of the world is going to cause everybody to go. That's what we've been saying. Like this, this is a catalyst on a global level. And I think it's really important to just share spiritual ideas that we're all going through because i feel like if this catalyst this this um pandemic was planned if this trauma is planned they might funnel that into some type of you know like like it says in the bible like a one world religion or like so i just want to be vigilant during all of this because people are going to be people that were asleep are getting forced 
onto a path of spirituality. And uh, I think like all religions, if there's a new religion that's created or something, that's just even more control and that's the controllers funneling this. So I think, uh, I think that should be avoided and I hope that doesn't happen, but I think, you know, as the globe is being traumatized, the globe will have to pick some type of spiritual path pretty soon. And hopefully they don't have something nefarious waiting at, at the other end of this. So just something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all agree. There's a good versus evil battle going on right now. And regardless on, you know, other th opinions that differ uh that's something we can all agree on tc you, you want to jump in bud yeah uh, picking up on a number of points that people have made um and picking up off of the last point that was just brought up the idea of this but basically being a funnel kind of like putting us into a particular emotional trajectory that uh, could be advantageous to the adversary at a later point in time yeah i can definitely see that uh and what Scott was talking about with his addiction as far as like overcoming that. And it's kind of like the truth is sobering and the, the drugs are the lies. And we got a whole lot of people all across society addicted to the lies that they've been living their entire life. And if, if you are chasing that, you got to get more lies faster and faster in order to be able to keep up that feeling of the life that you've led. And as you come down from that crash, it's like, we on the side of the truth got to be there in a receptive and open hearted and conscientious way in order to keep that from becoming something that erupts and is more something that's able to settle into itself. You know, it's like at that moment when the bread's just right, we're, tr we're trying to bake it or trying to make it so that it, it's just perfect for the moment. And anything that isn't that isn't good enough. So it's, it is that spiritual kind of thing. And also what you described insofar as where we're being led to, and it's sort of just what we do in that moment as they come. You know, that's kind of just my weaving the whole thing together. And anybody else want to? Oh, yeah, go I ahead. was just going to say that uh, something else that might be occurring is this this whole idea of predictive programming just kind of tied into conspiracies just a little bit. And I think the reason why spirituality and conspiracies kind of go hand in hand or why they, I know they do, because it's a it's a search for truth. What you're doing is you're uncovering different mysteries and you're finding out different things about yourself, about the universe, about everything. And you're finding out what a lot of what's been presented to you as far as what you can trust and stable in this reality is not so. And so whenever you embark down those journeys, then that's when you are then really, really realizing your ability to create your own reality in a very literal way. So whenever you experience that, then you look around and you know, 90% of people that are asleep are creating constantly. They're just doing it under the influence of whatever they're influenced by, which is generally the mainstream, right? And so with this whole idea of predictive programming, in my mind, the only reason that those things exist in the first place is because they put them out there for us to create them for them. So, and then to perpetuate that, of course, and it's all based out of fear. So what you do is when you wake up to that, you just realize that you don't want to participate that, in that anymore, and you don't. And you stop creating this shit that happens. You're, we are the manifestors. They have no power to do that. They control. We control real magic and real energy. They are cheap hack music, uh, magicians. So they can pull a rabbit out of a hat. They can show you an illusion. They can David, David Copperfield your Statue of Liberty away, but it's not real. So if they can convince you from the television and the black mirrors about your impending doom, then you will create it. Because exactly. we are the real magic. They're just illusionists. It, they're, it's like every th single thing in a Guns N' Roses album. Use your illusion against you. Chinese democracy. It's like, wow, so much right there. Just in album titles. Miriam, I know you wanted to uh, say a few things. I want to say, add something to Project, what Project Cheney just said. I, I believe there's something that someone's called the advocate method. Pharmacia means sorcery. And I asked Dr. Judy Mikovits, I think maybe on Union, about the saline. So this undertaker spoke to Stu Peters, a coroner, who said he believes placebos are 80%. So for every person that gets this jab that's a saline, then they become a salesperson, then they gaslight us. This is how they stagger the deaths. Oh, how are they? will they get them? Well, there's always the boosters. I just wanted to put that out there. Also, Gratitude is alchemy. I believe in magic. There's so much beauty to be had. 
and uh, we have to see through the hocus pocus. I just wanted to read Hunter, which is the seeker, the pursuer, the predator. Study the Greek goddess Artemis. Notice her nuanced relationship to the moon, the earth, and the feminine. The predator honors its prey with a precise and skillful hunt. The hunter deeply reveres the life it aims to take. I don't know what that conjures up, but I'm sure, I hope it conjures up some, provokes some thought. Artemis is also Diana, the moon goddess. Like they're all attached. And then some people attach her to Mary. Um, And so it would be the same thing what we're talking about here today is that they're all really attached. You just decide what language you want to speak. And it speaks to how everything is multifaceted, you know, and we were talking in the chat earlier, at least, if not in this discussion about labels and how kind of useless they are in a way, you know, it helps to be able to dissect and look at things. But at another level, once you label something, you've sort of cast it off and cast it aside. And so if you give something this one thing, like this is just this, Diana is just this and Mother Mary is just this. Well, that's not the truth, right? Everything is multifaceted and everything has multiple dimensions of itself. Um, including us. And so to label ourselves as the same disservice. Another really beautiful synchronistic thing just with the hunter card um, is that our the next full moon coming up is the hunter's moon, um, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, one thing we can kind of end it on to end it on a, on a positive note, unless the baby has some words she want, that wants to share. <laughs> I just but, wanted to say really quick, if it's okay, that um, yeah. there, for sure, there's a battle of good and evil going on right now. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm fucking here for it because this is why I was born to be here and radiate a frequency of light and seeing through the illusion that is so powerful that it brings other people in and calibrates them like a tuning fork to realize that the portal is within the heart. The portal is within the heart. There's no escape. There's no external door out of this. It's inward. It's within. And that we are fucking powerful manifestors. And this whole goddamn ruse is because we are that powerful we are that powerful and that's all we have to anchor ourselves into just like brandon was saying just like see the predictive programming and then fuck that shit like manifest the the timelines that we desire to contribute our powerful attention and energy to and that's it oh amazing Absolutely. Any anybody have other any, anything else they want to? I just I asked the chat um, earlier um, if I can finish with a mantra, um, and so you know we can let everyone else just like finish up if that's okay with everyone. Um, just one that I do in my daily practice would be nice to share to the world and whoever's listening if that's all right. Yeah, yeah I don't have a problem with that. Sweet. But uh, I, I guess before what I w- was what I was getting to was because we live in such a chaotic world, and I think spirituality, religion, music, art, anything that kind of help you uh, deal with the craziness and the world we're living in, um, I think is helpful. Do you, do any of you guys have uh, exercises to uh, kind of tap into that? That would you like to share with the the world? Maybe give people some tips on how to find Zen, how to find a peaceful place internally. Uh-huh. Can I, I find say, complaining helps. Complaining. Well, oh, <laughs> can I, I think the easiest and simplest that anyone of any level can do, like whether people are like, I'm not spiritual, I can't do these things, or they're like, I do these things all the time and chant and whatever, you can go outside and put your feet on the earth and just sit there and just be with that. Grounding. Yes. Yep. Anybody else? Marty, you want to jump in? Oh, Matthew? Yeah, sure. I think, you know, that's a, that's a great question because it's, we all have to find the thing that we enjoy most, right? So art is a great way, martial arts, sports, um, anything that we resonate with, and it's, it's unique to each of us, right? So if we sit aside, like who we are and the things that we enjoy and what we would do in quiet and what we would do with boredom, whether it's art or writing or martial arts or anything like that, um, we're going to be more disconnected from who we are. So, you know, if you haven't picked up a pencil, pick up a pencil, write a song. And, and so many good artists, so many good creators, musicians, 
Um, they don't do it because they're worried about what other people think. Be okay with just sucking. Make a crappy song. Like I could go on Instagram and write a song and sing it because I know I suck and that's okay. But people who are actually good at it are so resistant to it because they're worried about what other people will think. So I think it's so important for people to find their own passion and what they enjoy. And I also think that taking care of the body is very important. And on my lowest days during this thing, um, I've had some really low ones. I just thought about, okay, I'm a useless piece of shit today. I can't do anything. I'm overwhelmed. You know, this isn't good. As I was like, well, what can I do? I can make somebody else's day better. So I focused on making my partner's day better. I focused on trying to bring a little bit of happiness to someone else. So if you can't do anything else, but, you know, trying to make someone else happy, just make them smile that day. I think it's a really beautiful insight. And then just take care of your body, whatever you like for, you know, fitness, jogging, running, yoga. I love martial arts, but find something because we have to take care of our physical vessel. And you know, if you're either uh, struggling from addiction or uh, a health issue, you're not going to be thinking about the law of attraction and manifestation and creating a, a better world if you are physically ill and you can't take care, you know, take care of yourself. So um, do what you can to take care of your health in a way that's fun and exciting for you and figure out these paths of enjoyment that you can sit for hours and do and you want to get creative and um, just create, but don't worry about being good at it. Just freaking go do it. Yeah, I, I constantly encourage people to go find some artistic outlet. It doesn't matter if you're good at it or not. You're going to benefit from just doing it. You know, it, it forces you to reflect. It forces you to tap into something that I, I don't think you can quantify. Uh, and you're going to find happiness in it. And I think too often we do get stuck in this cycle of everyday life of being busy. Go, go, go. We don't spend any time, even if it is as simple as doing yoga or playing guitar, even if you suck at it, you know, whatever. But you'll find some peace and some happiness in that. So I think that's, yeah, without a doubt, very important. Anybody, anybody else want to? I think it's really, uh, oh, go ahead. Thinking, go ahead. Sorry. I, I just think it's really important. People own their awkward. I think every single thing for however old you are, we've been conditioned. We've been brainwashed from every magazine, TV show thing we've eaten our education to have a very direct programming. So when you want to tell someone you love them or call that friend you haven't talked to in a while or pick up the guitar that you've never played before in your life, that awkward feeling is all your programming fighting you like the devil, like trenched around you, telling you you're never going to be good at it. You're stupid. Don't open your mouth. Don't start a podcast. Don't stand on a soapbox. Don't own an idea or look any deeper. It's like that awkward feeling you have to fight against. Say it, do it, feel it, taste it smell it like it, that's you breaking your programming that's you going against everything that the overlord set up for you they don't want you to find that bliss they don't want you to find flow state they don't want you to connect to your ancestors or jesus or whatever the case may be they don't want you to have any faith in anyone else including yourself and that's the whole point so i really think it's so important to just like settle into feeling awkward and the uncomfortableness of tasting your own tears through laughter and laughing through your own tears and doing it with people. I think that's church. Damn, Cheney, stop killing it tonight. Jeez. And own your awkward. Somebody buy that URL that they're create a ban or something. That's my first t-shirt that I'll be releasing never because I have no gumption. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to just say, um, kind of like, kind of piggybacking off like what Lindsay said, like sp spending time unplugged, like without a phone. Um, I, I think wandering, like whether it's like on just taking a very long walk or a hike or even like a drive, like it's safe. If you're like studying spiritual subjects all day and then you just like wander, you're you're, you're going to daydream and then kind of get the, the downloads that will be kind of like light bulb moments. And it's also just unplugging from all of this stimulate stimulation because most of, most of our problems are just things we see on our screens. I mean, we see them in the real world too, but if you're, if you're just wandering on a trail or in your neighborhood or in your car by yourself, I feel like, I really feel like God like comes to you then. So 
that's why I, I agree with that. it's funny because i constantly try to find creative ways to get myself out of the same thinking pattern right because sometimes we're in the same thinking pattern we're doing the same routines every day and it's hard to kind of snap out of it and then it can be psychedelics it can be uh not getting enough sleep and you're up all night and all of a sudden because you're out of that pattern all of a sudden you're looking at things differently it can be exercise it can be uh getting up for once in your life, too much sleep. And, and, and then you wake up and you're looking at things that are traveling, right. Or, or drinking or smoking or whatever you're into, just anything that gets you out of that pattern uh, can help you start looking at things from different perspectives. And even something like you said, going on a long walk, wandering, uh, getting lost. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that could be something that could help <laughs> if you're, you're not panicking, but, um, but yeah, well, without a doubt, anybody else want to jump in? Marty, you ready? Go jump in. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what point to to talk about here, other than you know, you're um, when you um, when I've written a song, it's like the best songs. I felt like I never wrote them; like I received them. Kabbalah means to receive, right? And whenever you have like a spiritual revelation or epiphany or and things like that, it seems like it comes from. Well, outside, but inside, it doesn't come from you. You know, I think, I don't know if I've talked, maybe I've talked to Lindsay on your podcast, something like that, where you'll be in the middle of writing a song and you'll, you've never heard the song. You're in the middle of writing it and you already know what the third verse is going to be. And you can already hear the, the, you know, the pre-chorus or whatever, the bridge. It's like, well, how can I already hear something that hasn't been written yet? It doesn't make any sense. And so when you get to a place like that, you realize that that, that, is divine it's like you're a stenographer for the lord or something like that it just like hands you that and the only you know the only way you can receive that is by having like a truly open heart you know what i mean like to be able to be there and to receive it and so if you want to actually you know get those revelations or whatever receive those things you have to show up you have to be there. You have to open up the book and, and, and write down the things you want to write down. You have to pick up the guitar. You can't, you have to be active in your own spiritual pursuit, you know? Um, and ultimately I think that will lead you to your heart. Um, the, the one thing that always kicked my ass um, studying all these like compared to religions and mythologies and all that sort of stuff was the weighing the heart ceremony. You know, when you look at, um, you know, this idea that when the Egyptians crossed the gates of death, they would go and have their heart weighed against the feather of Mott. And if your heart was lighter than a feather, then you would cross into the gates of death and you would get into the immortal kingdoms or whatever, right? The halls of immortality or whatever. And the, the, your heart and your chakra is your balance. It's, your, it's, the, it's the, in the center. You know, you've got three above, three below, right? And that's really this idea that you're, you're put in this place, as we all know, of, of extreme good and extreme evil, and you have to walk every single day knowing those two things sort of exist. And you have to like balance yourself in the, in the middle of them and always sort of be transcendent of them. You know what I'm saying? Like not always be pulled in one direction. It was like, it's, you're not good or evil. You're great in that sense. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And whenever you're in that place, that's when to, to me, that's when you, you receive those gifts, the graces, whatever you want to say. And so, and I know so many songwriters and I've talked to so many people that have played musicians, uh, playing bands and stuff like that, like cosmic keys. You were talking about it. Like when you're in a band and you're jamming and you're communicating with other musicians and things are happening and you're not even conscious, you're not thinking about what you're doing at all. Right. And so that's the place in, in essence, you want to be that sort of like, that's the Tao, that's the flow state, that's the way, and that's pure heart, you know, and that's where it gets to, at least in like a, a mystical sense an esoteric sense of, you know, the um, sacred heart of Jesus, you know, it's always getting to that place. So um, that's what, that's what I want. That's where I want to be, you know. Beautiful. I was saying, yeah, to the middle path, because that's my other show name. And then Chaney said, center of the spinning top. And I was like, yeah, like, that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> the fulcrum seemed to always too one-dimensional for me. Like the hermetic idea of sitting in the middle of the fulcrum. I'm like, yeah, but that's just linear. It's just one line. Like, it's just not enough. Uh, anybody else? 
If not, we can start plugging. Let's plug away. This show gets a lot of downloads. Plug your shows. Anybody? I just yeah. wanted to share one idea. If I can. Yeah, go for it. Whoops, and then I muted myself. So it, it's so cool because you're. I love sitting here and listening to um, things that are coming in and how you can you can hear and receive the downloads or whatever we want to call call it and it is in that space in this quantum field that it's what I really believe with my heart is if I receive that feeling that desire to create something to do something whether I'm denying myself of it or not it's already been created in the quantum field the information the vibration the everything to actually manifest it into creation has already been (laughs) is already there. So it's like putting that action around it for me. That's what it is, which is sometimes like, yes, making sure I'm sleeping, stepping outside is a big deal for me. Um, creating anything, just grabbing a paintbrush and a canvas and letting whatever come through. And this idea of being creative that I think we learn, it doesn't mean like you're, you know, you have to become a Picasso or you have to like create the most magnificent thing most of those people when they were creating it had no idea that that's what they were creating they were just actually in their heart center in their flow connecting to the information that was around them and in them and within them and letting that come out and actually manifest into a physical existence and so i just um you know that that can be a really complicated thing but it can also be a super simple thing like all the tips and ideas that everybody has shared and i think for me one of the things that inspires that is to show up in service, however it is to something outside of me, like helping a neighbor do something or I don't know. Connecting with animals is also a big deal. I'll walk my dog and I'll feel totally different. The other day I was going through so much purification. I could feel myself, just my field, just oozing out all the stuff that needed to go. And it was painful (laughs) and then i stepped outside and put my feet on the earth and it all of a sudden shifted completely my experience of actually what was happening was still happening but my experience and my body of it shifted put your feet in the earth (laughs) wow we're all connected it's funny i just had a dr tom cowan back on my show recently and he he talked about how everything's made out of water and i started kind of connecting these dots i'm like this is so weird because he was talking about how like everything's made out of water, humans everything that's on the earth and uh and then you look at like rupert sheldrick and this idea of like you know you teach mice one place how to get through this maze and mice somewhere else learns that maze quicker even though they're they're not physically connected it's like 100 monkeys yeah so it, it it is it is weird how all these things kind of all these theories kind of connect and they kind of uh explain each other you know in in, in many ways so it's it's fascinating mike uh midnight mike i i know uh you know you don't consider yourself the most spiritual person but you married uh, your your wife's pretty spiritual you got any uh comments any anything you want to share any practices that she does to stay spiritual and and put up with your butt i'm kidding obviously uh, she uh, meditates, uh, does yoga, um, is into crystals, and is much more spiritually inclined than I am. I live in the gray. <laughs> How is she not rubbing off on you? You sounded so depressed when you when you were sharing that. <laughs> I wake up at 4 a.m. and I work 14, 16 hours a day. That, that will do it. That will suck the life out of you a little bit. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I just... You know, I do a ton of work every day. Well, well, I, I have nothing. That I thought I had something clever to add to that, but I didn't. I uh, I kind of got stumped. But um, <laughs> if people want to start, uh, Charlie, you got anything? Yeah, you. And Zora Zora Nanda was gonna do a cool thing too. Oh yeah, you want to do that that cool thing? Uh, maybe I can do it after the plug if everyone wants to plug in their stuff, and it can be a way just to kind of like finalize. And close it. That's but that's our, cool. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. And so, who who wants to start? Let people know where they can connect with you. Uh, if you have a show, where the show is located, all that stuff and more. If anybody wants to start, if not, I'll do it. 
I'm a brave warrior. No, <laughs> I'm just really good at butting in. <laughs> Um, I do Rogue Ways and Middle Path are my two shows. I do them primarily on Rockfin, although I do have YouTube presence that I'm trying to just dwindle off of because they like to block me a lot. And I provide a lot of services, spiritual and otherwise. I write books and I do all kinds of other things. So if people want to go to rogueways.org, they can also check all of that stuff out. Uh, but I'd love to catch people on the show live on Sundays, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain or on any podcast app. Thank you. I could go real quick so I can, I got a, I got a dog here crying to go out, but uh, I'm Ron from New England, from the Wicked Planet podcast, um, everywhere is where all the podcasts are. And I just want to thank uh, you guys for uh, inviting me to come on the show. It was a really unique experience and uh, just wanted to say hi to everybody I don't know and hi to the people I do know. Um, and thanks for having me on. Thanks, Ron. I'm also in Massachusetts, if you're wondering, 413 in the house. Yeah, I'm in New Hampshire. Oh, nice. So we're close, yeah. Anybody else want to jump in? Yeah, I'll hop in. Uh, Brandon Thomas with Expanding Reality uh, on Rockfin recently, so just have one damn thing up there. But uh, YouTube, expandingrealitypodcast.com. We do all sorts of cool stuff on the show. Come check it out. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Tease, and I run a show called Conspiracy Synergy, which is designed to be a comedic introduction for your friends and family to the realm of conspiracy. In, in other words, it's my job to try and make it so that the swine we're trying to feed all those pearls to are actually able to wake up and shake off the shit and not be swine anymore and kind of like clue into the fact that there's a lot more going on. I think that's something that we can accomplish, and that's what I've uh, set out to try and do. So you can check out my show, Conspiracy Synergy, at conspiracysynergy.com, and it's on all like the Odyssey. And I'm also over, over as one of the content creators on the One Great Work Network. So if you haven't checked that out yet, check that out too. I'm Marty Leeds. You can find me at martyleeds33.com. I call myself a, a teacher of the mystery and a preacher of the heart. Um, I'm currently run basically a, a mystery school. It's called the Ch uh, Gnostic Church and Academy of Lord Jesus Christ. And I have a bunch of books and, and podcasts and music and all that sort of stuff. You can mainly find me at martyleeds33.com because, you know, we're censored everywhere else. So, <laughs> And thanks for having me, guys. This has been fantastic. I actually needed this. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me as well. I'm Mark from the My Family Thinks I'm Crazy podcast, as well as the Alt Media United Cooperative. And uh, I also help Sam with Tinfoil Hat. So check out those shows. But most importantly, check out My Family Thinks I'm Crazy. Uh, it's been a year since I started and we're at 100,000 downloads. So thanks for everybody who's been listening. And we just put out a really cool episode with Charlie Robinson. So go check that out. Well, then that's a, my cue to speak up, I guess. My new book is out, Hypocrisy. It's available on Amazon. You can get it in paperback and Kindle there, or you can get it in digital format from my website, theoctopusofglobalcontrol.com. And uh, you can hear macroaggressions. And of course, this show here. Um, thank you all for being a part of this. It, it continues to be a true joy in my life. Uh, my show is the Cosmic Keys podcast. It's available wherever podcasts are streaming. And I'm also on Rockfin there. So, yeah. I'm Amy Belair. My podcast is Third Eye Awakening. It's all about spiritual and psychic awakening experiences. And I'm also on Rockfin as Amy Belair when I manage to get content up. Thank you. My name's Chaney. I do projectchaney.com uh, podcast. You can find it anywhere you get your podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm just ranting or talking to interesting people. And you can find me on Instagram or uh, Chaney in Wonderland. Maybe you can find me on Instagram. I doubt it. But you can find me at Project Chaney everywhere. I just want to say real quick, I forgot Michael Wan was here earlier and him and I just started a new podcast called Your Handbook for the Apocalypse. So you can check that out if you search Susquehanna Alchemy anywhere podcasts are found or you can find it on my feed, the My Family Thinks I'm Crazy podcast. But Matt, I think you should go next. Mastermind, body, spirit. 
Yeah, man. Well, you plugged it for me. Uh, my name is Matt Belair. I have a Mastermind Body Spirit podcast. There's over 500 episodes. They are heavily censored. So find me on Rockfin and on Odyssey and just my website. Uh, there's a I backed them all up because it's been absolutely insane. So uh, yeah, just reach out that way. Who who has? Oh, I think I'm the last one. Oh, so I think, I'll. Uh, I think also. Oh, I now there's a few more. Oh, there we go. Go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Gotta keep track here. <laughs> Miriam, you want to let everybody know where they can find now your your tanner self in Florida? Right, <laughs> my brown bunny self. Uh, I do uh, co-host a show called Quantum Woo. Usually on Thursdays, I would like to reach out to some of you after the show. And I am working on, still working on my book on George Floyd with um, and the documentary with Scott from Truthzilla. You can find me on Twitter still as Mary Minane or Lady B. And I'm also shifting to doing more consults as a functional health consultant and coach to focus on health and vitality and not sick care. Thank you. It's been an honor to be here with you. I stayed to do the, the chat. Uh, real quick, um, if people want to listen to a fun podcast, go to obdmpod.com. That's mine. It's not really spiritually enlightened. Um, but my wife, who is much more spiritually enlightened than I, uh, she's got a great YouTube channel called The Naked Gardener. It's all about our uh, homesteading, uh, gardening and growing things organically and as uh, cleanly as possible. And she gets into spirituality and being at one with nature. So check her out, uh, The Naked Gardener. Believe it or not, Mike actually has the funniest show, even though he sounds so depressing right now. He actually does have the funniest show. You would never believe it no. if you just heard him speak right now, but it's show is hilarious. It's the best show that's out there, in my opinion. I, thanks, guys. But <laughs> that's <have>. so awesome. <laughs> I think it makes it funnier, the fact that you host a hilarious show in that monotone voice. I'm just grumpy all the time. <laughs> Catherine, did you go? Yeah, I'll go. My name is Catherine Oche. Um, I run soullightpetservices.org and I have a show called The Pet Healing Show uh, twice a week. I'm on YouTube, Soul Light Pet Services, um, and on Instagram and expanding my ways to connect always, always, always. And I help uh, facilitate change for humans and their pets either way. <laughs> Awesome. I, and so I think that's a, uh, you're left, right? Who, who? Yogi. Yogi. Yes. Yes. So yes, I am Yogi Zorananda. Um, my podcast is called the Renegade Yogi podcast experience. I'm a total noob. It's been six months and it's a slow process and I love every minute of it. Um, my website is zorananda.com. So uh, Z O R A N A N D A dot com, where you can find my book, find my music, you can find my meditations. And yes. So, I'd like to close out with a mantra that I like to do daily. It's called the Akanda mantra. Akanda means whole or wholeness. Um, so, I invite you to close your eyes and sit back if you're in this group, if you're um, listening to this live or in the future. So I'll do the mantra. It's pretty short. And then I'll read the translation because it's, um, it's a really beautiful mantra. Om Akanda Mandala Karam Vyaptam yena chara charam Tatspadam dashitam yena Tashmai shri guruve nama I bow to the complete, indivisible universe, the entire energetic system containing all forces, essences, forms, and beings working harmoniously. Centered in the heart, these forces interconnect and radiate in all directions, unifying existence of all that is moving and unmoving. I stand with this truth and offer gratitude to the guru and all the teachers that give light to this path to experience infinite 
divineness, oneness, and the experience of being whole, Akanda. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Namaste. That's how you had a spiritual podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm talking about. That amazing. is awesome. Thank amazing. you so much, guys. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I had a blast. Thanks, everyone. Bye. I really Thanks, everyone. Everybody's uh, Bye, guys. in the show description. And, uh, and so people listening, you can check out uh, their own shows and connect with these people. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.